Welcome, everybody, to the Gym Master Show Live. How are you and you and you? Good to have you with us. It is Thursday. Yes, almost the end of the week. Hope you guys are having a good week. Everybody watching all around the world on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV and our Facebook channel as well, or Facebook page, Gym Masters TV. It almost seems like a channel with all the activity on that page. Good to have you with us, and thanks for joining us, everybody all around the world. We get so many great comments about this series that we started some 36 weeks ago as an entertainment lifestyle talk show series, sort of like we mentioned Carson and Dick Cavett and Mike Douglas, Merv Griffin, David Suskind, some of the originals, Regis Philbin a bit, but with the modern sensibilities as well worked into that of today. And uh, so many people have been just telling us that they're really enjoying uh, what we do here on the show. And we thank you very, very much for all of the tagging and the sharing and the posts and the comments as we continue to grow. Uh, again, this, as you know, uh, is fashioned after some of my professional work in television and radio as a TV radio personality and a presenter and host, journalist, actor, writer, producer, stage MC, voice artist. And uh, we started this as an entertainment lifestyle talk show series, and so many people have discovered it and uh, extraordinary guests from television and film and music, Broadway, Hollywood, health, wellness, science, art, comedy, food, you name it, and lots of surprises too. <laughs> we toast all of you as well in style. So we welcome you and you and you and you. Uh, nothing more in this glass other than some nice iced tea. That's about it. Hmm nice and light. Uh, all your cast of characters are here. We will show them in just a second. We welcome, of course, our audience. Uh, we've got an amazing guest here on the show, an absolutely fantastic guest. We were just chatting moments ago, and uh, I am sure that you are familiar with his work. We're talking about renowned illustrator and celebrity caricaturist Ken Fallon is here, and wait till you see some of the extraordinary amazing imagery we're going to be sharing with you, video as well as still. And uh, he is a national treasure and a legend. And we're, I've, I've been such a big fan of his work that when I invited him on, I was so honored when he said, absolutely, you just tell me where and when. And uh, we have a great show in store for you tonight. Let's welcome some of our lovely viewers from all around the world. Dante is here. Good to see you, Dante. And San Diego watching on our YouTube channel. Uh, welcome all to Levity Hall, another excellent live show with Jim Masters. Thank you, my friend. Christ, uh, Christine is here, Christine Clifton. Greetings, Jim and Levity friends. We welcome illustrator, caricaturist Ken Fallon to the show tonight. Soon will be an entertaining conversation with Ken. You better believe it. And lots of beautiful, exquisite visuals that he has uh, personally uh, lent us to use on our show uh, to show you some of his extraordinary work, which we appreciate. Mary Bishop is here from Florida. Hello, Jim and Lovety friends. Oh, just so you know, he already knows about the Lovety thing that you guys call yourselves the Loveties. You call me Mr. Lovety and you are going to welcome him as a Lovety. He's prepared. He says you can never have enough Lovety. So he's he's got the scoop. <laughs> he's ready for the Lovety coming his way. Mary Bishop in Florida, we uh, greet you as well. And Marilyn is here in Wichita, Kansas. Hi, Jim and all our Lovety. It's good to see you, Marilyn, as well. Kathy Short is here. Hello, Jim, and our lovely family from Cleveland. I hope you are enjoying your day. You as well, Kathy, there in Cleveland. Uh, Sharon DeMar, she is here from Connecticut. Nice to see you as well. Happy Thursday evening, everyone. Uh, Ann Wozniak is here. Good evening, Jim, and all lovelies. Hope everyone is enjoying a terrific Thursday. Good to see you, Ann. From Canada, hi Jim and all lovelies from Merlin. She is here as well. It's nice to see you, and hope you're having a terrific day in warm and sunny Canada. <laughs> we'll have to get a report on that. Is it warm and sunny there in Canada? I hope it is for you, Merlin. Hello to everyone from Marsha Murphy Watson. Thanks for joining us, Christopher Joseph. Music, welcome Ken Fallon and all lovelies on the Jim Masters Show. Thank you very much, Christopher in Ohio. Karen Campbell Green, hello out there in lovely land. Uh, good to have you with us, and you were ill, so we hope that you're feeling better. We wish you all the best. Karen watching from Nova Scotia, one of our lovely viewers from uh, South Africa. Juanita is here once again, one of our faithful lovely viewers from South Africa. Hello, Jim and everyone. Nice to see you, Juanita. And uh, yes, we're glad that Karen's feeling better. 
Thank you. You like the turtleneck? Yeah, I love. I'm a sweater guy, and I love the turtlenecks. Frank Thompson. Hello, Ken and Jim from Troy, Alabama. Nice to see you, Frank. Welcome on the YouTube channel. Nice to see everybody. Greeting everybody as well. You love the Christmas tree in the background. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Yeah, we uh, adjusted our set and uh, made it very festive for the holidays. Glad you guys have been enjoying it. And hello to Bernadette and everybody uh, saying hello to everybody. Welcome, Ken, to Lovety Hall. Absolutely. Kathleen is here in New York City. Hello to Jim and hi, everyone. Kathleen as well. It's good to see Kathleen. Merlin says, welcome, Ken, to Lovety Hall. You're now a Lovety. I knew that. It uh, didn't take very long for that to happen, <laughs> for him to become a Lovety. Uh, Jill is here. Hi, Jim. Hi, everyone. Good to see you, Jill. Cheryl is here. Newbie. Looks like a fun show from A to Z. I love it. Welcome to the show. This is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series. I'm your host, Jim Masters. We're here every day, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Tomorrow, we have two shows. We're on live at 4 p.m. with R&B sensation Lady Bane, a special holiday concert episode tomorrow. And then at uh, 7 p.m., Irish-American baritone Emmett O'Hanlon is going to be my special guest. He used to be with Celtic Thunder. Uh, he's going to be with us as well, and um, he's amazing. That's two shows tomorrow, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. Take a look at our Facebook page at Gym Master TV. You can see the rundown of some of those episodes coming up. Welcome, Cheryl. We're on YouTube at Gym Masters TV and also Facebook at Gym Masters TV. Hey, Jim and everyone. Jennifer in Allentown, Pennsylvania. And... Uh, Arizona. So you're from Arizona, beautiful Arizona. We just had Glenn Scarpelli on. Of course, you know, he was one day at a time. He was in that series. Uh, he lives in beautiful Sedona, sunny and 42 Fahrenheit there. That's the latest report from uh, Canada. You love last night's show with Bobby Horowitz. She's terrific, isn't she? And Karen says, welcome to Lovety Hall. Good stuff. Good stuff. We appreciate that. And uh, yes, the tree is new on the set. We added that uh, yesterday, actually. Uh, let me tell you about my amazing guest. Uh, he is extraordinary. Ken, uh, well, you've seen his work uh, <laughs> gracing our landscape for a long time. We're going to show you some amazing visuals. I love this shot. <laughs> Isn't that cool? But of course, this is him at his office and uh, doing his thing. He is brilliant. And uh, let me tell you just a little bit about him. He's been doing this for a long time. He began his career in 1983 by illustrating all of the ads for Forbidden Broadway. The concept was a homage to the great theatrical uh, caricaturist Al Hirschfeld. Subsequently, Ken received regular assignments for the Boston Herald, the Wall Street Journal, InStyle Magazine, the New Yorker Magazine, The Hollywood Reporter, Los Angeles Times, The Washington Post, The Chicago Tribune uh, Magazine, as well as Politico.com, The Ladies Home Journal. You've seen his work in all of these magazines and publications, including Playbill. Other clients have included HBO, Showtime, Jazz at Lincoln Center, The Metropolitan Opera Company, American Express, uh, Belvedere Vodka, CBS News, Walt Disney Productions, the Peter Norton Foundation, and Microsoft. Ken received an Emmy Award nomination for his animated commercial for CNBC's Squawk Box show. Of course, I remember that too. Ken has several posters in the permanent poster collection of uh, London's Victoria and Albert Museum. His drawings are also on the walls of the Players Club. A permanent collection of original drawings and prints is on display at New World Stages in New York City. Ken also has a wonderful love for theater. This is something that he's always enjoyed, and uh, he's paid homage to that as well. Ken's love of theater is represented by regular drawings on BroadwayWorld.com. His private collectors include Angela Lansbury and Stephen Schwartz, Warren Buffett, Barbara Streisand, Jason Wu, uh, Sarah Jessica Parker has his work, Darren Chris, Bernadette Peters, uh, Bradley Cooper, Sir Patrick Stewart, Harold Prince, and so many others who love his work. And uh, if you're not familiar with it, wait till you see it tonight. Uh, but I'm sure you are familiar with it. Again, he is a, a treasure and a legend and was so honored to have him here live and direct from his studio in New York City. Let's welcome renowned illustrator and celebrity characterist the one and only Ken Fallon. Ken, good to have you with us. Happy holidays and welcome to the show. 
Thank you. I want to meet the guy you were just talking about. <laughs> Wearing... <laughs> Thank uh, you. So much. This good looking guy right here. <laughs> yes. Oh, gee. That's Rico Suave right there. <laughs> oh, <please>. Yes. <laughs> oh. Well, our Lovities are welcoming you from Nova Scotia. Karen says, welcome, uh, Ken, our newest Lovity. And Karen says, I envy people who can draw. I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. <laughs> That's sad. Yes, and, but everybody has their their thing that they can do. And um, Exactly. I exactly. Your technical abilities. And I <laughs> we had a little episode before the show started because I have no technical abilities. It's a miracle that I can work on the computer and do all of that. I had to learn it. You know, he, he learned it on the spot within a, about spot. a minute to spare. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He was I had uh, brown uh, hair before the show started, but he was he was uh, as opposed to on our streaming service. He was sitting on our YouTube channel, looking <laughs> at it, saying, well, "I'm not. Ha nothing's happening." And I'm, so we're texting each other and saying, "Story oh, of my life." I'm waiting at the bus station, and the train comes in. You know, that's that's the way it, it is. You know, but I don't care. I made it. Here. But you made it, and you made it, and you made it, and that's what counts. Hey, Ken, happy holidays from Jennifer Barry in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Cheryl Myers, welcome, Ken. My daughter loves art. Maybe she will take after you. You, oh uh, Kathy Short in Cleveland. Welcome, Ken, to the land of Lovities. Marshall Watson. Hello, Ken. Welcome to Lovity Hall. Jill Jason. Welcome, Ken. So excited you're with us tonight uh, as well. Anne is in uh, Southern California. Hello, everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome, Ken, which That's is, nice. yeah, yeah, the, the, the love uh, comes in um, and... Hi to Jim's. I adore him. I, uh, I know Marianne. Marianne's wonderful yes. too. Yes. Great, Great photographer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a lovely Anita day. in South Africa says, welcome to the show, Ken. Anne Thank says, you. so happy that you are joining us, Ken. Uh, again, she says, I adore him. He's a great guy. And <laughs> she goes, she goes, hi to both of us. Bernadette says, uh, welcome, Ken, to Lovely Hall. I'm a Fallon, but maybe related, but a little bit of a different spelling. That's right. <laughs> There are a lot of, yeah, there are a lot of different spellings and uh, it depends See? on if the FBI is looking for you, how you're going to spell the, the last name. Thanks for showing Ken Fallon from his biggest fan, Steve Martin, the real one. Oh, Steve Martin. Oh, yes. So he's a wonderful guy. He lives in uh, Omaha, Nebraska and a uh, great, great fellow. And I'm so excited that he's watching. Yes. Welcome, Steve. Good to have you with us on the YouTube channel. Absolutely. At Jim Masters TV. Kathleen Walker in New York City says, hello, Ken, and welcome. Uh, Karen loves the picture of you and your puppy. <laughs> it's Alfie. Alfie. Alfie is my rescue dog that I was only supposed to keep for four days as a foster parent. And it was five years ago. So that was called a foster fail. Oh, ah. fabulous animal. I recommend rescuing if you want to want to get a great dog. There's some wonderful dogs out there. We've always got, yeah, we are our, our any pets we've ever had have come from shelters and mm -hmm. yeah. Uh Marianne owns a Ken, an original. She does. Oops, she, does. she does. She owns uh, a drawing that I did of uh, Bonnie and Clyde, I think it is the musical of Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, Omaha is watching, surrounded by your work. That's right. Steve my Martin is is one of the largest collectors of my work. I, I don't even remember how many drawings that he has, but he saw a drawing of mine in the Wall Street Journal, and uh, he inquired about it, and that started a whole thing. I mean, he has such good taste. It's it's amazing that he Michael Colby had mentioned Tales of Tinseltown and. Having uh, done the work with that as well, and uh, hi, Michael. Yeah, uh, they all, they're all loving Alfie. Yep. Thank See, you. Well, whenever you have a pet involved, they go crazy for the pet. <laughs> and and he, he's circling you there in the area, right? <laughs> yes, yes. He's right at my feet right now. He's always with me. How can you not love something like that? I mean, absolutely. He's me around, and I just I melt. Christine in North Carolina says, welcome, Ken, to the show tonight. You're now a Lovety. Maureen, Thank good you. evening, Jim and Lovety's. Welcome, Ken, to Lovety Hall. We're so happy to see you. You Thank know, you. like I've, I've said to so many people, Ken, you know, you can get an Oscar, a Peabody, a Telly, an Emmy, a Tony. But when you get a Lovety, you need all this Lovety from the Jim Masters show live. It's extraordinary. Are your fingers and feet tingling right now? 
Oh, is that what that is? Yes. It's, yes. Something's going. Yes. It's yeah. wonderful. You, don't to, you don't need to call the doctor in the morning. It's 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 a levity going through your body. <laughs> you. I'm honored. I really am. Thank oh, you so much. It's our pleasure, my friend. Um, let's talk about the early beginnings for you and how you first got started. What was it about, you know, drawing and and this just getting into the fabulous world of art in the way that you have as an illustrator and being a brilliant caricaturist. What were some of those early inspirations for you and your youth? Well, like a lot of people uh, my age and even younger, uh, I love the comics. I love the cartoons in the Sunday paper and I adored Mad Magazine. I thought it was okay. so sophisticated and the, the artwork was just so of such a high caliber. And I started drawing whatever style I saw in the Mad Magazine and so forth. And uh, and also I watched Saturday morning cartoons and some of the older cartoons from the 30s and the 40s, especially Warner Brothers, did uh, cartoons with caricatures of famous people like Humphrey Bogart and Mae West. And that just fascinated me that it was a real, actually a real person made into a cartoon. So mm -hmm. that, that's when I really, fell in love with caricature. And so I, I did it, but I never thought of it as something that I would do um, professionally. It was like kids playing baseball. I, I doodled all the time and I gave people drawings, but it was just something that I did. It was easy and uh, fun. So that's yeah. how it actually got started. And I never intended to, to do this for a living. It was all, my life has been one big happy accident. I started, I came to New York to be an actor. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I didn't end up one. Um, yeah, I say that is it's such a tough life. And oh yeah, yeah. I'm fortunate that because when you're an actor, someone has to hire you or give you a job in order to do the thing that you do. I can draw regardless of uh, circumstances, and I've been very lucky with that. Absolutely. You, I would say so. I would definitely, what, what were some of the first works? What were some of those first drawings that you did? And were they drawings that you did or were you commissioned? Were you requested to do certain drawings early on in the career? Well, again, it was like a happy accident because Forbidden Broadway, which was really my big break. Yeah. I wrote a letter to the young man that wrote the show, Gerard Alessandrini, and I sent him some samples of my work. Not what I wanted to show him was I had an idea for a number in the show where actors find the Ninas all over their bodies. And I said, I can draw a similar style if you want to have me help with the costumes. And so about half a year later, I get a letter and he says, we're, we're redoing our, ad campaign. The show had only been running for about six months and we want you to do it. Never mentioned my idea that I had for the show. So next thing you know, I'm doing the, uh, the posters and all of these other companies opened all over the country and Chicago and Los Angeles, and they all hired me. And it, it's over 30 years ago that I've yeah. been doing this job. So that was my lucky, I, I really say that that was my lucky break because from there, I, uh, I got a job at the Boston Herald doing the drawings and that led to, it just, it just kept going. It, it was just wonderful being on that, that wave of work because it doesn't always work out that way, but. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. Exactly. Uh, you know, I, we got a wonderful comment that came in here and it's from Chris, and Chris says, once upon a mattress, that was such a creative use of Ken's talents, I can, I played trombone on that show. Oh, Chris, hi. Yes, um, that was a few years ago. Um, no, only about five years ago, uh, they did a production of Once Upon a Mattress uh, in a downtown theater. The transport group did it, and they, the producer of that show had an idea to have an artist come in and draw the scenery live and it would be projected onto a, the back of the stage. So we had meetings, they thought of me and uh, it sounded like a lot of fun. 
But during the process of designing the rest of the scenery and rehearsing the show, they discovered that the scene changes were so fast that I wouldn't really have enough time to complete a, a drawing of a set. So what we did, I Xeroxed the basic lines of the, of the set. And when a scene would change, you would see my hand come out over the, uh, the, the back of the stage and I would fill in the rest of it very quickly, draw it, there were, you know, easy lines. And it was magic. I, the audience loved it and it was so much fun. I got to be at every show. Mm -hmm. Not, I wasn't an actor in a way, but my hands were certainly exposed. Like sure, yeah. Part of that. And it really, um, it was a lot of fun. I, I'm so glad that I had that opportunity. What happened from there? What was the next big break, big opportunity that developed as a result of that, Ken? Well, uh, nothing really theatrical. Um, I've had a, a lot of different projects, but from, from that, I the person that developed the uh, projection system, I've been waiting for him to give me more work. He's really nice, but he's, he's done a lot of Broadway shows where they, they design projections that are amazing. And they can do them where you don't, you know, you don't see shadows or anything. It's just, it's so sophisticated now. And, uh, but I'd, I'd do another one in a minute. Mm -hmm. A lot of time you have to do eight shows a, a week. And so, but I, I loved it. It's in my blood. I, yeah. I could do to keep me from running on the stage and performing, but it was. <laughs> <laughs> have they ever tried to get you to do that over the years? No. Great a role for you. <laughs> I even auditioned for Forbidden Broadway. You did? <laughs> I did. It's so sad. I don't want to. Oh, gee. Yeah. Like I say, I'm very lucky that I that I fell into this because actually, since I draw shows, I get to go to just about every show that opens on Broadway and off Broadway. And I feel that I'm a part of the theater. It's like a dream come true because people in the theater know me and I go backstage and I, uh, when big names, big creative people see me and they address me by my name, it's very exciting. And, uh, Oh, sure. I got a, you know, part of my dream came, came true. What is the process like? I mean, are you actually there watching the show are you sketching during the show or are you how are you capturing it not really i work from production photos and i shouldn't say this out loud because i really don't have to go to the show <laughs> but i get certain feelings and, and see certain things that aren't in the photographs but i i prefer a, a production photograph because i can take my time and people look different from different angles and photographs and so forth. So that's that's what I do. Mm, that's fantastic. How long does it take to do one of them, or does that really depend on the subject uh, and the you know the intensity of what's involved right. in it? The details. Yes, yeah. every drawing is different, and some of them take a lot more time. Uh, I would imagine yeah. you know people are very humbled when you do uh you know a character illustration of them when they are it's kind of like when somebody's on saturday night live people will say gee did you you know they just parodied you on saturday night live or what have you mm -hmm. did you like that most people say i'm honored by it i would imagine that the people that you've done thus far and there are countless uh in that list love what you do well just about everybody <laughs> yeah I've had uh, a few people, and I, I can name names if you'd like, uh, as long as the people that are watching this don't, you know, let it go any further than this. But Liza Minnelli does not like to be caricatured, and she doesn't like people doing impressions of her. Uh, and she's a very sweet lady. I've met her several times, and I actually went backstage once and showed her one of my drawings and she just sort of froze and I felt terrible. I felt all the air leave the room. So I excused myself very quickly, but people are sensitive. And uh, another one that's a big shock is Carol Burnett. She does not like caricatures of herself, even though I know they used a logo for her. Carol Burnett show was a logo of, of her. Yeah, the wash woman. Uh, yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. I, when they opened 
the last show she did on Broadway was Moon Over Buffalo. And the ad showed a, a moon and underneath it was a buffalo, a drawing of a buffalo. And it was that's a clever idea, but it wasn't selling tickets. It didn't have a, it wasn't serving the purpose it was supposed to. And um, I knew the producer of that show and she called me and she said, can you make some sketches and, and send them over and some ideas that you have? And so I did that. They were all in pencil. And I got a call. They were having a meeting in the ad agency. And, and I hear all these voices laughing. And, and, and my friend Elizabeth says, they love it. They love your work. It's, it's great. And uh, I, I'm just sitting on the phone picturing my artwork in Schubert Alley and on the sides of buses and everything. And I'm getting all excited. Well, the next day I get a call from the producer. And she says, well, you know, everybody loved the drawing of Carol Burnett, except for one person, Carol Burnett. So we can't do it. We can't use it. We don't want to make her unhappy. And I can understand that. So uh, you you never really know. I'm, I, I have, there's another actress that I really admire and I've known her socially, Patti Lapone. And I've done probably two dozen drawings of her and she really likes some of them. And some of them, she would run after me and hit me over the head if she, Good. But that's just the nature of people, um, because you're you're actually the caricature is an exaggeration, and it's the way that I'm seeing people. So they're not always going to be flattered. Sometimes when I do a private commission, and I send a sketch of the drawing to to the person that's hired me, and if I get a negative reaction right off the bat, I'll say live with it for a couple of days, you know, let it grow on you because you're, you're having a, a reaction that it's just, you know, you just don't like the way I've drawn you. And usually it grows on them. And uh, I've had some very nice reactions like that where the people said, no, 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 no. And then well, you mentioned, uh, Patty LuPone, Patty. we actually have one here. Aha. Uh -huh. That was for, uh, what was the name of the musical? It was uh, Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. And I did this drawing and the art editor from the New Yorker saw it. And that's when I got work for the New Yorker. So this, this was a good drawing for me. And I mean, it's very exaggerated, but it's not, uh, I don't think it's cruel, but then that's, that's coming from me. Right, Michael just wrote that the uh, Hirschfeld did a poster of uh, Carol Burnett's musical Fade Out, Fade In, and she vetoed it and had him re redraw it. And so mm. that's just the way things are. But Patty, see this one? She liked this one? You know, I think she saw it. I'm not sure she liked it. I don't really remember. Mm. Um, her press agent really dislikes me because he, he thinks that I'm always being cruel to Patty. And um, it, it's, it's really bizarre because we'll see each other at something. I mean, I just sort of nod at him and he nods at me, but I know he really can't stand me. Look at that. Because of well, that. look what you did with Betty Davis. I mean, this is extraordinary. <laughs> Betty is... Um, well, she has all those great features and all that attitude. And this is from All About Eve. And um, I, she's, she's a lot of fun to draw. I've drawn her several times. And uh, I, I love that movie. So it, it, was, it was a favorite. So now, would this have appeared in a magazine or on a Playbill or anything? Uh, where would this, this have appeared? particular drawing, I did a... Um, a show in uh, Hollywood about seven years ago. And I did all of these drawings just for the show and they were all related to the motion picture uh, industry. So I did, this was one of those drawings and it, uh, it sold for $8,000, which really excited me. I have to also add that it was a charity event, which is, yeah, that the, the opening night was a charity event. So of course, sometimes things go for higher, uh, but that was beautiful that you did that, you know, to help the charity. That was, it was a very exciting experience to have that type of show. Andy Warhol. I mean, that's spot on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And he's such an interesting and, and I think, great artist, very unique. And he certainly had a unique look.
Did he see this one? No, he was long gone. He was already gone. The time I did this drawing. Yeah. And this and, one I think, was also done for another show, the New yes. World Stages show that I did. The New World Stages, right. right. They're loving that. The Betty Davis, they're really knocked out by the Betty Thank Davis. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. That is so Betty Davis, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, that makes me feel great. I, I'm Because, you know, when you draw something or when you're doing something, you think it looks like the person maybe, and you like it, but when other people respond that way it's extremely gratifying they're all saying that great artwork love it love that andy looks just like him uh, <laughs> it really does you've captured um you know i would i mean this these these characters these are not like what you get when you go to uh you know disney world and the guy does it in five seconds for 10 bucks this is right. you, know, well, I mean, this is, you know it's a different type of thing the people that I call them boardwalk caricaturists, and I don't mean that as a put down, but it's a formulatic uh, style. They know they draw. They have a, a head filled with certain noses and ears and eyes, and they just see you, and then they just. It doesn't really matter that it doesn't look like you. They just use those, but that's because they're drawing so many and so fast. Yeah. Uh, because I mean, there I've, are several that are quite talented too. I mean, yes, I've had. I've seen them when they have time. Yeah. You know, when they have time, they to have time. The They're work, always I'm, it's much better. So I don't, I don't really judge that type of thing. And I've done several charity events where they said, "Can you come in and just draw quick caricatures?" And I said, "Well, I, I'll do it, but it, I don't really. I like to study and cha I change things, I erase and move things around, and that's that's part of the creative process. So I will do these events, but I'm always like very, very tense. And a couple of years ago, you might find this interesting, Microsoft. Uh, introduced a new program and they rented the entire Times Square, all of those billboards, all the electronic billboards, and they set up all of these stations all around Times Square and they hired a whole bunch of artists and my agent got me this gig. It paid a lot of money and so I thought, well, this is going to, I'll be doing what I don't like doing and don't feel that I'm very good at it, but I went and my session was at night and they would, they'd say, grab somebody that's walking by you and say, would you like me to do your caricature? And as you're drawing it, I say, look up there on the screen and like all over Times Square, my one drawing of this person was being uh, projected. And it was, it was <laughs> really fun. I, I probably will never have that experience again of being in Times Square and surrounded by the work, but that was, that was a nice, um, Bernadette said she had someone in Disney do it for her who did a fantastic job. Probably. There you go. Yeah. I had a couple that were done then too, and they did beautiful work as well. Um, the drawings are awesome. You are uh, one very talented artist, Ken. These are very nice. amazing. So of everything you create. These are great. Definitely captured Andy Warhol. Now, I would imagine you have people too who – hire and or commission you to do them, right? Like they want you to do a yes. character of them. Yes, um, I do private commissions. And that's actually uh, really where the, the money is. Not that this is just about money, but uh, I do a lot of corporates work. And um, I remember a, the Wall Street Journal has helped me with that because a lot of you know CEOs and so forth see that paper and they see the work and I was hired by this big stock person. I don't even know what his title was. And he hired me and he loved the drawing, did not like the necktie that I gave him. And I said, that's a first, you know, <laughs> I got him. He's like, okay with the nose and ears, but not the necktie. Everything else worked. <laughs> would not be seen dead in that necktie. So we changed that. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, you never you know. Yeah, there's a couple of pictures I've seen too of you. You do that with your eyes. It's really cool the way you open them up. It's it's like you create your own caricature, like you do. Oh yes, it's just like it, the eye. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I look like Brad Pitt, but obviously uh, I would have. Uh, I I concur. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, Take a look at this, folks. I told you, uh, Ken has graciously uh, shared with our show here exclusively some really beautiful 
uh, a lot of visual eye candy here. Take a look at this. If you think you enjoyed Andy Warhol and Betty Davis and even the Patti LuPone, here comes the one and only Count Basie. Take a look at this. I mean, fantastic. You know, I can't really tell you why exactly, but this is one of my favorite drawings that I've ever done. It was done for the Wall Street Journal. And I just love that drawing. I mean, I'm partial to some things, but it, I'm glad you're showing it. it. It just worked for me. And I was just very, very happy with the whole design and everything. So when, like you say, the Wall Street Journal, uh, how does that work? The Wall Street Journal would then call you and say, okay, Ken, you know, we want to, we want to do something on the life and we're doing a story on the life and times of him or how does that work usually? Well, I am freelance, but since 1994, I've been regular, I've had regular gigs with them and it's been wonderful. And what they do, they have, uh, the art editor will send me an email. I'm so old. I used to get phone calls. <laughs> they used to call me on the phone actual, and not that, actual they would send messengers, messengers to pick up the artwork and take it back. And this was before scanning, and uh, and and they tell you who who they want. And uh, I've been very lucky. I mean, they, they sometimes make changes, but when I was doing the uh, artist, the arts and leisure section, it was just just a delight to do those. And another funny section that I did for about two years, believe it or not, in the Wall Street Journal, I was in the obituary page. Whenever somebody famous died, I would get a, an assignment. Yeah. So whenever I was working in my studio, I always had the radio on and watching the news to see if somebody died because I was thinking, you know, Ooh, money, <laughs> I'm getting another job. And one of the editors at the, the paper said that I was like a vulture with a pen, but uh, I did so many people that had passed away and you'd never think, I mean, the, the journal sort of a conservative, is a conservative paper. So mm -hmm. when the Pope died, I thought, well, that's not going to happen. They're not going to have me do a caricature of the Pope. They did. I was very reverent. I was very, I was scared. Yeah. I, I did a, a drawing of the Pope. Unbelievable. A uh, Karen actually in Nova Scotia asks, have you, speaking of, uh, speaking of Brad Pitt, have you ever drawn Brad Pitt? I have. You have. For the Hollywood show, I did a drawing of, of Brad and, um, I'm very proud of it, but it's, it's a self-portrait, you know, that's, yeah, yeah, I have drawn him. Here's uh, the wonderful Elizabeth Taylor, folks. There you go. Stunning. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What was I, this one for? That was also for the Hollywood show. And that also went for quite a bit of money, the original. And uh, the man that bought it also hired me to draw his daughter. A, a little girl. And I remember that not fondly because drawing children is very difficult because they're not really formed yet. And parents are very, you know, usually very touchy about their children as far as their looks. So whenever I would get an assignment like this, it would make me very nervous. But this man was so generous with, with buying this drawing for the charity. So I couldn't turn them down. It came out okay. I mean, I, I was very, very careful and they were very pleased. So did you ever have one where you didn't love it? You wanted to tweak it more or do something different, but yet they loved it. The person you did loved it. Don't touch anything. Don't change anything. I love it the way it is. But you see with your eye a couple yes. of things you wanted to do with it, but they like, I'll take it as is. Right. Does that happen sometimes? It has happened. Yes. And I, and I go with them. I go with what they decide because they're uh, the client. They're the client. Exactly. Right. We've got another beautiful one here too. Now this is the, the color purple. Tell us about this one. That is cool. Well, that's one of the drawings of it's amazing season on Broadway. And I was doing a drawing just about every week and, uh, you know, the color, let me talk about the color a little bit. I, used to hand color them all. And then somebody said, well, you know, you should work in Photoshop. And I said, I don't want to do anything electrical or with the machine. I don't want to, you know, it's just not pure to me. And you also do not have an original. You can make a print of it, but it's still not the original drawing. But the deadlines 
can be so tight that sometimes you do not have time to actually do a color thing. So all of the illustrators and artists that I know that work the way I do use Photoshop. So this is a Photoshop example. And even the pattern on, on, on her robe, I can't think of that actress's name, but she won the uh, Oscar for uh, Dream Girls. Anyway, um, so this is a sample of the type of drawing that I would do for a, a show that I had seen. Karen says, so beautiful. And Maureen says, this might just be my opinion, but your work is second to none. Love it. Well, give her my uh, private email. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I'm feeling down, I'll just, you know, send her a note. But that's, thanks you. That's very nice to say. There are a lot of, a lot of people that do what I do and a lot of uh, very talented people. And, and some of them are my friends and, uh, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, it's just, that's absolutely beautiful. For all of you Elvis fans, take a look at this. There he is. There he is. Dang. Wow. I actually saw Elvis when I was quite a young boy. I think it was seven years old, and he was playing my hometown of Jacksonville, Florida. And I was taken by a neighbor, and it was a very exciting and strange experience, but I can still, part of the memory is still there, but he was very exciting and, and uh, mm. to draw. I mean, he's somebody that has so many wonderful features. Mm. So uh, what was this one for? That actually was done for, uh, as a portfolio piece. Mm -hmm. The beginning you do uh, drawings for your portfolio and uh, I, that's what I did it for but it's been used and people have bought prints of it over and over again. So it's, it's been lucky for me. And uh, Michael says, Jennifer Hudson in the color. Jennifer purple. Hudson. Thank that's you, right. Michael. That's right. That's right. Michael uh, knows his stuff. <laughs> Elvis love the great work. Wow. That's an awesome uh, Elvis. Love your artistry. Oh, you I want me to show you something that I, I, again, I want no one in your audience to tell anybody about this. Show the Elvis again and I'll, I'll point out something. I used to have a lot of trouble drawing hands and I swear to you, every time I draw a hand, I count the fingers. <laughs> Elvis is missing. Uh, he doesn't have enough finger. One, two, three, four. The thumb is missing. So. So you assume it's probably wrapped around the microphone. Yes. Right? Yes. So I, for some reason, I wasn't counting that day, but I've, in the beginning, I had so much trouble with hands and now they're one of the, my favorite things to draw. And I love drawing feet and I have a foot can be such an interesting thing with the toes <laughs> going all over the place, but I don't get a chance to draw many bare feet. <laughs> I mean, there's not much demand, but, um, well, uh, you, you have very light skin, so I don't think you're hanging out in lounge chairs at beaches a lot where there are a lot of feet that you could sketch. True. <laughs> this is true. This is true. I think that's where all the feet probably are. <laughs> that's it, the tootsies, and not this time of year. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Got to go to uh, the Sunshine State, I think, for that. Uh, Errol Gardner, of course. This was really, really impeccable, Ken. Look at that, Errol Gardner, folks, huh? I did this drawing. This is actually cut paper, which is something that I really enjoy doing. Tell, explain what that is for the audience, in case they're not well, sure. You make it's almost like a paper doll. You cut out each section on a piece of colored paper, like his skin is on the brown paper and so forth. And you then you draw the features on top of that. You have a rough idea of what it's going to be, and then you assemble it. And on this one, I I have happy accidents sometimes, and I. Errol on top of a piece of pink paper, which I thought, you know, really brought it out, made it uh, neon like. And so, uh, and I guess it's successful. I, I like it a lot. I, this was for the Wall Street Journal. That was for the Wall Street Journal as well. Um, really incredible. I mean, thank you very much. Love this. They're a lot of fun to draw. I like, I love drawing musical instruments. But a musician, especially a pianist, I've drawn dozens and dozens of pianists for the uh, journal. And I always enjoy those assignments. And I don't play the piano. I, that's the other thing. I had to learn how to count the keys. So I'd put in the <laughs> blacks and the whites. And the... How about animals? 
I have actually been commissioned to draw animals. I, I like to draw animals, dogs especially. I've not had very many uh, editorial pieces with, with animals, but I've done some private commissions. Mm. Uh, they're, they're wonderful. They have a lot of personality. And as you know, every animal looks different. And uh, Have you drawn Alfie? I have not drawn Alfie. A very good friend of mine in Alabama, who I think is watching this, because he, uh, yeah. he is a great painter, portrait painter, and he did a fabulous painting of Alfie, and it's just, I'm so happy with it. And he did another drawing, a painting of my late dog, Molly, and they're both hanging in my studio. I look at them all day long. That's something I can't do. I wouldn't be able to to paint the way he does, that, that style, and I admire uh, people that are able to do that. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of music, the extraordinary George Gershwin. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yes, I'm a huge Gershwin fan. And I actually live on Riverside Drive in New York. I'm at 88th Street in case anybody wants to come and visit me. <laughs> I lived in the penthouse. Both those seven, doors. <laughs> yeah, really. 75th and Riverside Drive. He had the penthouse when he was writing a lot of his early shows. But uh, I did this drawing was actually done for uh, BMG Records, and it was in a catalog. I did all of these composers, and this was one of them. And this drawing of Gershwin has sold a lot as a as a print. I've really uh, I've made a little money off of, of Gershwin, but I, I really do love listening to his music. Now, anybody in the Gershwin family see it as well? Do you ever have sometimes where the person that you did doesn't see it, but their family or their off, you know, their, their their grandkids, what have you, see these works and they love it as well, and they want a copy of it, or and they admire your work. Maybe the artist is long gone, but their family loves it. I'm trying to think. I can't think of anything right off the top. Um, the mind is going, Jim. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, after this year, I think everybody's mind has gone. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Um, Hamilton. Oh, my yes. God. Really? Yeah. Yes. Manuel, Miranda, you've got it. Tell us about this one. What was this one for? This is extraordinary. I mean. Well, this was for um, Broadway World. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm not friends at Broadway World. Yeah. Yes. I got to go to a preview. I always go to previews because they they want it drawn before the play opens. And to show you what good seats they give us, I was seated right next to Lynn Manuel's mother and father. Oh my, wow. Uh, so we talked during intermission. They were telling me all these nice stories about him. And uh, so this, this drawing is also sold a lot because of the popularity of Hamilton. Mm, yeah. I mean, that's really fantastic. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, I wanted to show you something because I think you can see it in this drawing. Hirschfeld was known for hiding his daughter's name, Nina, which started out as a family joke. He did it in a drawing and then it, it just grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And everybody always says, well, do you hide a, a name in your drawing? Well, I hide my last name. I started that about six or seven years ago. And... I'm pointing to it on my screen, but you, it's in the feather of. Uh, okay. So. Okay. Yeah. So I have that now. And uh, I never just, I never asked the wall street journal if they would mind if I did it. Cause they give me a printed credit. Yes. Doing it. And uh, it's fun. You know, it's no big deal but now when people say well do you hide your name and i can just or hide a name i say i hide my own name because i have no daughters or sons or anything i could al hide alfie's name i guess right <laughs> uh, a comment came in from uh, michael isaacson who said i'm friends with gershwin's niece frankie ross she'd love a copy oh oh of gershwin get in touch with me See, I'm glad I asked that question about uh, people that know people who might, you know, obviously Gershwin not with us. However, maybe there are others who would like to get it to those who would 
absolutely love that. A um, couple of other questions. There's a couple of questions that come in. Somebody had asked if you have, have you drawn Robin Williams? I have. Um, I, I drew him early when I was in Boston. I drew him in a he was in a movie, I think, called The Tin Man or something. It was a, a Cadillac salesman. I'm, it's very vague, but I, I did that. Yeah, I think I remember that, yeah. And then he did a Broadway play, uh, I guess it's now been about seven or eight years ago, called something The Tiger and the, the Bengal Tiger and the um, something zoo. My mind is going. But it was he played the tiger in the play. It was brilliant. I thought he was great, and I drew him in that play. And uh, yeah, he's sadly missed. Absolutely. Yes. Nobody, nobody like uh, Robin Williams. That's right. I want to show this one too. Uh, for those James Dean fans out there, we've got you covered uh -huh. as well. Take a look at Ken's work with James Dean. I mean, Smoking spot. cigarette. Spot I, <laughs> I love drawing cigars and cigarettes, but I, I don't like smoking and it's so weird now or not weird. It's actually good that you don't see that much smoking in movies and TV and so forth. But, uh, it, to draw a, a smoking cigarette is, is fun. I, Love all Ken's work. Phenomenal artistry. Thank you. Yeah. Really, really nice. And, uh, these are so great. How am I supposed to choose a favorite? <laughs> that oh, is tough. Uh, that is a tough one, Maureen. <laughs> I'm going to be floating after this. Oh, this is what you call real levity, my friend, real levity. <laughs> uh, oh my God. That's all I can say. Oh my God. Amazing. Oh. Mm. Uh, Michael asks any self portraits. I, haven't done I a think, didn't you, wasn't there i thought i saw something where oh, yes the one with my hair did i yeah, see it too? Yeah. okay you'll see that that was done uh, a show i, I, I don't think we years. have that one i don't think you sent that one but i've seen you yes it and i like that my one. hair is my name i drew my hair out and and so forth that was that was a quickie i had to make up something for a show i was doing and they said well can you do a self-portrait and I probably did that in 15 minutes, which is not my usual time. Really? 15 minutes? You I know my face so well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how do you do it? Like we had um, Bill Plimpton on uh, the other night and he, he uh, did one of himself and he said uh -huh. what he did, which is what a lot of people do, is they use a mirror. So they put a mirror up in front of themselves and draw to the mirror image okay. of what you're seeing. Do you okay. do that as well if you're doing a version? You know, I find a really good photograph of myself because I, I'm, I guess I would just, the mirror, I'd keep moving it around or I wouldn't be happy. But that sounds, sounds like a good idea. I know Jay Leno uses a caricature when he signs his autograph. I actually went to college with him, not that I'm dropping names, but uh, if you get his autograph, it's a very quick, caricature with a huge chin and so forth and little dots for eyes. And of course, you know, Alfred Hitchcock, uh, back in the day when you got his autograph, he did a, a beautiful, very stylized caricature of himself. And uh, I wish I could come up with something like that if, you know, if somebody asked me for my signature, except on a check or something. But anyway, uh, a yeah. lot people, and, and Ronald Reagan used to do caricatures of people when he was having cabinet meetings. Yes. Right. That. So now did you just, mention, did you just happen to mention Alfred Hitchcock? I did. Go. I <laughs> did. He's one of my favorite directors and uh, what a, what a face. I mean, the whole, you know, I mean, look at the birds to the detail. I mean, that's right. You asked me about animals. This was, this is a rare time that I've, that I've drawn animals and uh, the Boyds. Th this image is for the birds. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, that's, that's an actual. Uh, you can't bird. hurt my feelings after all of these other compliments. Uh, I was going to say that that is uh, positively a compliment. And you know what, too? What's I that? love his necktie. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Gee, you noticed. Thank that's you very it. Much. But the expression, you've captured the eyes. And, you know, caricature is a, a slight exaggeration. How, how do you define, I mean, everybody has different definitions of everything. 
Mm -hmm. This for folks just joining us, this is Alfred Hitchcock. And of course, birds, the movie, uh, how do you define caricature? It, it's generally an, ex it captures the essence of the person, but yes. it will exaggerate a little of the obvious, right? Yes. Well, there's all types of caricature. Even some portraits are caricature because they exaggerate a feature or make somebody look more beautiful. So it's any exaggeration. And even in photography, they can do, you know, they can exaggerate and so forth. But it is exaggeration. And it's the way uh, the artist sees that person. And the fun part for me is when I sit in front of a blank piece of paper and I look over at the photo reference and I just start drawing, making shapes. And sometimes it falls right into place. And I'm like, I'm amazed myself that that happens. It's something I can't even describe. And then other times I'm thinking, I don't know how I ever anybody ever hired me to do these. I'm, this is the worst thing. I'm not going to uh, make anything out of this. And with the Wall Street Journal, I can't, uh, not do it. I've never turned down a job. So I work on it until I get it right. I determined. And usually they, they come out. Okay. Are you a perfectionist about your work? To a degree. Um, I really want it to be the best that it can. And I am, a, I'm an old fashioned draw. I use a still quill pen. That's the type that you dip in the ink. Every time you do a few lines, you have to go back and dip it in. And I use this very good India ink that's almost like motor oil. It's so yes, right, but it keeps clog. It clogs up my my pen. I have to. I have a razor and I scrape it off like every ten minutes. But I'm so used to. I've always worked that way, and I don't draw on the computer. I use the Photoshop, but I I like the feel of the the board and the ink, and it's it's just uh, I like all of that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Question. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. That's cool. Well, the definition of the different types of caricature and, uh, and the yeah. fact that it's, uh, you know, um, an exaggeration to a degree of the obvious. And, and that might be why probably, like you say, some people here and there don't like caricature of themselves because it is an exaggeration of something that is the obvious that is something they personally don't like about themselves, maybe at the nose right. or the mouth or the ears or whatever it may be. Well, some artists are cruel. They're mean. That's part of their trademark. And I mean, you see some of these paintings and they're just, they take and go as far as they can and even go further. And that's the style. I'm, I'm not really into cruel, but I admire when, the, when they captured them. There was an illustrator, I guess this was back in the 40s, named uh, Alfred Frey, F-R-E-U-H. And his lines were so simple that he actually, he did a drawing of George M. Cohan, if people know, remember who he Not was. Sure, yeah. And there's no face. It's just the body, the way the body is uh, bending over, and the the way he holds his hat and his hand. And you know that it's, that it's George M. Cohan. It's amazing his work because he does less and less detail lines, and yet you still know who it is. And there's several other artists from that era that did that in different ways, but that type of thing just really blows me away. I, I admire it. And um, well, when it says love Alfred uh, Hitchcock, great picture, Juanita in South Africa, amazing Hitchcock, Karen in Nova Scotia, that's amazing. Love these sketches, Christopher in Ohio, Karen, uh, the birds, oh my God, my son's favorite Hitchcock movie, uh, Michael Colby. Uh, I have one with Hitchcock and Boris Karloff did a uh, skeleton. Oh, so Michael has a uh, Hitchcock autograph. That's that's a very... Uh rare fine. That's, that's uh, good. I've seen them in person, but I've never owned one. And uh, Karen says, oh my God, all I can say is amazing. Bernadette, oh cool, loves the James Dean. Uh, so talented. Uh, where can we purchase Ken's prints? Chris asks. Well, I have a website and I think I'm the only Ken Fallon on the entire web that spells it the way that I do. 
Right. And you can I see, see it there, F-A-L-L-I-N. I -N. Jimmy is O-N. <laughs> right, right. That's it. So it has my email address on there, and you can tell me what you want, and I can send you all the information mm -hmm. for asking. Cool stuff, cool stuff. Uh, James Cagney did a great job as George M. Cohen, yes. Yes, absolutely. And, That's uh, a great movie, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Ava says, uh, hi, Kenny. We love your work. She's watching on our YouTube channel. Oh, Ava, Ava, is, Ava and her husband also collect my, my work, and they, they own quite a few. And it's, I always like visiting them <laughs> because I walk in and it's like. And a, there it's, yeah, that means, you know, they, they really uh, understand the excellence mm. of your work. And welcome, Ava. You're watching on our YouTube channel. Hope you subscribe to the YouTube channel. We would love that. Share some of that lovity. We have some more to show you, folks. Uh, just getting started here. Some really beautiful work coming your way. We showed you James Dean again. A lot of people were commenting about that. That really is, that's a cool one too. How about, what do you get when you take Picasso and you combine Capa uh, Picasso with Lady Gaga? Wow, that's cool. I, was, I started doing a series because I was going to have a new exhibit at New World Stages. I was going to change all of the drawings. And this was one of the drawings that I did before they shut everything down. I thought I would do uh, interesting pairs, people that would be interesting paired together. And that's not an original idea. Uh, way back in the 30s, uh, Covarabias was a Mexican caricaturist and shared a studio with Al Hirschfeld. He did a series for Vanity Fair. Um, I can't remember the title of it, but Hirschfeld did something called Unlikely Casting. So I just thought, who would be interesting up with uh, Picasso and so Lady Gaga with this thing. That's really cool. Has Lady Gaga seen it? I don't think so because uh, it hasn't left my my studio yet because it was made for this exhibit, which has not happened. And so this is something exclusive that we're seeing here. here. That's right. You're the first to see it. How many times do we have that, folks? Every time. It's a world <laughs> premiere exclusive on the Jim Master Show. People debut songs. They do debut baby photos, food, oh, yes. everything you can think of, they uh, they debut. Well, we appreciate your sharing that uh, on our show, Ken. That's very kind of you. Uh, and now we're going to give you a little Leo. Leo uh, yes. DiCaprio. Yes, right? from way back when he was doing Titanic. And that is also cut paper. And each section of that is a different piece of uh, colored paper. One of the other reasons that I don't really do it anymore is I've was always cutting myself with the paper and, I, and you know, and then I'd spill blood on the drawing and I have to start all over again, but it, it's very time consuming, a lot of fun. It's like assembling, like I said earlier, a paper doll. And, uh, but so, you know. so it's cut paper and cut Ken. <laughs> and cut Ken that's right. That's right. I bleed, I bleed from my art. <laughs> you see what he goes through folks to create oh, this art. Oh. It's extraordinary. I mean, oh. He's not showing his fingers for a certain reason. There's bandages all over them. <laughs> I'm a mess. I'm not seeing it. This, this is not even, uh, this is an artificial body. I just stuck my head on it. That's it, right. So he doesn't put thumbs in the artistry, but he's all thumbs, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's amazing. another, of course, one of my favorites, uh, the comparable Miles Davis. Mm. Oh, yes, Miles Davis. I did a, another drawing, uh, like I cheated. I did it by cutting up this drawing. I had them back to back and the hair was connected, but this was the original drawing. Al H says, hi, Ken, we love your work, Al and Tony H. Thank you very much, thank you. Uh, Michael asks, Ken, did you ever think of collaborating with a composer on a picture or song project? Hmm. Not really. Until now, Michael. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I I don't know how to animate, but like I, I did that um, commercial where they took my drawings and animated them. And I think it was done in a computer. And then that that's how we got the uh, Emmy nomination. So I guess I could do an animated. I just draw like this and they would animate it by the computer. Uh, the Miles Davis, you said this was for what project? This was a, a, a gallery piece that I that did one of my shows and it sold right away. It was very, uh, yeah. 
I could see, I could see why. And then we take folks uh, next to Marilyn Monroe. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's poor incredible. Marilyn. Nobody ever photographed her or drew her. She's just been forgotten. It's amazing. I'm being facetious. It's yeah. amazing that she died. I think what 62, 63, and she's more famous now than she was then. And the, the show that I did at New World Stages is in the Worldwide Plaza, which I don't know if you know that block. It's 8th Avenue, yeah. 49th Street. That was the Madison Square Garden before the one that they're using now. They tore it down, of course. And that's where they had the famous birthday party for JFK and where Marilyn Monroe came out and sang Happy Birthday, Mr. President. So when I was putting the show together, I said, well, we have to have Marilyn Monroe in it. So we used this drawing for the posters and the uh, the ads and so forth, Marilyn Monroe in Madison Square Garden. This was actually taken from a, a Life magazine cover, the pose and the uh, dress and so forth. Mm, really fantastic. And goes, yeah. how, how awesome uh, being able to attend this amazing art exhibition from our homes. Thank you very oh, much. Uh, such a nice thing to, to say. And I, I'm yeah, beautiful, Marlon. we're getting to do this. It's, it's yeah. very rewarding because, you know, I do these drawings and then I'm at home. I don't really get to hear a lot of people's opinions. And so this type of thing is extremely gratifying. Oh, my pleasure. And when I asked if you wanted to come on, you were, you hopped right on, which I appreciate. Ah, uh, beautiful Marilyn. Uh, love the red lips from oh, yeah. Merlin in Canada. Uh, yeah, they're just uh, absolutely amazed by what we're seeing. And then, of course, Murder, She Wrote, Angela Lansbury. Yes, this uh, was showing. Go ahead, Jim. I didn't mean to. Yeah. Go. Oh, I was just saying that this is absolutely amazing. You captured so many different, uh, you know, versions of her doing different things. It's incredible. Well, this was a commissioned work. Uh, there's a library upstate in a town. Uh, where Angela Lansbury actually, when she first came to America, she was living with a family there. And the library in that town wanted to honor her. And they hired me to do this drawing. And I actually came up with the idea. I said, well, I'll just do, I like her so much and she's so great to draw that I'll do this drawing of several characters from her career. And I got to meet her because I was invited to this uh, big banquet that they gave for her and I, stood next to her when they presented it. And she was so sweet. She was just so nice about everything. And she seemed to really like the drawing. And I was sort of, of course, very pleased the reaction I got. And you've captured her again in so many different roles at different times in her life too. I mean, that's really extraordinary. Well, and I like the one where it looks like she's peeking out from behind. Murder, she wrote. Yes, the murder. Remember, murder, she wrote. Yes, yeah, on CBS. Yes, of course. Detective in that. So, really, really, it's extraordinary. Really Thanks. extraordinary. And, it's a and big drawing. Physically, it was quite large. So, I don't, did I send you the photograph of of Angela and myself stand, holding the drawing? Uh, let's go. No, we don't have that one. But um, next year when I come back, we'll bring it back. back. Yeah, all all guests. We even have guests that say if anybody last minute doesn't show up, call. They want to come back on, which is you know because uh, it's, it's a comfortable atmosphere. We try to yes, yes, warm and inviting. I was uh, nervous all day long. I thought, oh, my were you God. really? Oh, yes, I was. You you couldn't tell now. Good. <laughs> How many injections did you have before we started? <laughs> but it is very comfortable. I'm really enjoying it. And my pleasure. My pleasure. Nice, uh, very nice things. The incomparable Barbara Streisand. I mean, this is about this one. This is spot on. Thank you. The man that directs all of her concerts, Richard J. Alexander, is a longtime friend of mine. And when she did her concert called uh, Barbara Back to Brooklyn, before they came to New York, they had they opened in Philadelphia and she gave a dress rehearsal at the uh, university there. And I got invited 
to go to this dress rehearsal. Now, I saw Funny Girl on Broadway. I'm old enough. I saw that. And I never thought I'd get to see her live again because it's like so hard to get tickets and they're very expensive. Yeah. Within seconds, they sell out. Yeah. We went there. I was so nervous and excited. I've driven to Philadelphia so many times. I managed to get lost in <laughs> trying to get to Philadelphia. I was so excited, but I did manage to get there and everything worked out. And we were, it was such an intimate thing. Maybe there were like 700 people there as opposed to 10,000. And that's, that's their, her version of intimate, right? Is 700. The entire gymnasium set up the way the stage would be in a completely different place the next night. I mean, she wanted to dress for her, you know, and it was fabulous. Well, after I went to the concert and it was near when I was doing this exhibit, I did a drawing of her the way she was dressed and everything that night. And Richard came to see it and he took a picture of it. And he said, well, he called me in April, which is her birthday month. And he said, you're never gonna believe this. He said, every year I try to find things about Barbara, pictures and so forth that she probably hasn't seen and I send them to her as a birthday present. He said, she called me this morning. It was probably five o'clock in California. And she said, I love this drawing. And it was so thrilling to hear him say that. Then he said, he captured my leg. And so <laughs> <laughs> he loves her legs. I mean, I that, that's what got it. And I said, well, you know, I'm going to have to do a, I hate copying myself. I hate cop doing another drawing exactly the same, but I'll do it for Barbara Streisand. He said, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. And I said, well, I'll, I'll make a print. I'll have the way my prints are made very nice and I'll send it to her. And he said, that would be very good. And I did. And she sent me a very lovely thank you note. And I, cause I was, I've always been a huge fan of hers. Right. Right. That would happen. So that was a really exciting. Yeah. Well, you did capture her legs and everything else. It's extraordinary. <laughs> if you only take your shoe off, it would have been so much better. <laughs> then you would have got the foot that you wanted. Oh, oh. Oh. Well, oh, well, you've always got a leg up on the situation. <laughs> that Midler. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. So perfect. This was a drawing that was done for Showtime. They did a Bette Midler film festival one week and I got hired to do a drawing of Bette Midler. And I'm also a huge fan of hers. I saw her way back when she was playing small roadhouses out in the woods. And so I've always been, and she inspired me when I was in art school because I was always drawing her. And I, so when I got this assignment, it was, you know, it was fairly easy because I'd drawn her so many times. So the dress that she's wearing is actually supposed to be a bomb. Like she's the bomb. She's the. Yeah, she's she, it. And this is done in cut paper. The original that Showtime did is a pen and ink drawing and doesn't have all of this other stuff going, but I redid it as a cut paper. And she liked it. She liked it. I heard that she liked it. And I've met her several times and she's never tried to hit me. So I guess. Yeah, she's. <laughs> She's a great person, girl. Michael says you mastered the hands. <laughs> you sure did. Little hands, just little hands. <laughs> yeah. No, it's perfect. Well, thank you, Michael. Absolutely, Bernadette loves it as well. And uh, yeah, I'd be. Uh, Merlin asks, "Have you ever done share?" I have. I don't. I don't have any um, samples tonight. I have drawn her, and she's another very interesting person. And when I read that story about how, her rescuing that elephant in Africa, I love her so much. I'm a big animal. I, she's a great, great lady. And that, that just proves it because she went over there and paid all this money. With, maybe it wasn't Africa, it was in uh, uh, Asia somewhere, but she did all of that to rescue this elephant that had been chained up in, for like 30 years or something. Anyway, I love mm. her. Yes. Mm. Who are some of the other folks? We have some more to show, but who are some of the other folks that uh, you've done that really stand out? Some of your personal favorites, other than what the fabulous ones we're showing right now. Any that really stand out as your 
No, I sent you the Pope. Everything else is garbage. <laughs> you didn't send me the Pope. <laughs> no, no, I'm still ducking from that one. No. <laughs> Somebody yeah. asked uh, if you do uh, political figures. Yes. Yes, for the Wall Street Journal, I've done a lot of them. Interestingly enough, I've only drawn the current president, I think, four times. And when Bush was president, I drew him scads of times. And Obama, I drew a lot. Um, and I've drawn the president-elect when he was vice president. And I'm looking forward to drawing him because I think he has a fabulous face and great smile. So yes, I've done a lot of political because I started working in a different section for the journal, the opinion page. Mm -hmm. So on so many politicians and a lot of people I've never heard of. Yeah. But yes. Are there others that uh, you would love to have an opportunity to do that are on your list? Past or present? Well, I'm working now on a drawing of Renee Zellweger, mm. and I had the pleasure of meeting her mother and father on a cruise. I don't think I told you I used to lecture on cruise ships about. No, her. I didn't realize that. Yes, yeah. it was a great gig for like 15 years. I went all over the world, met fabulous people, and on one of the cruises, I met the Zellwegers, and I did a drawing of them on the ship. I put together something. And they had asked me when they met me, they said, have you ever drawn Renee Zellweger? And I said, I haven't yet. And they said, well, we're her mother and father. So that was very exciting. Well, a few years pass and they're getting ready to have their 50th wedding anniversary in Montreal because that's where they met. And um, they decided to use the drawing that I did as the cover on the invitation. And they sent us an invitation. So we went to Montreal to this delightful evening, a very intimate dinner party, and I got to meet Renee Zellweger. So I'm currently working on her, uh, drawing her as Judy Garland. But um, you know, that's what I'm doing now. I'm very excited. She's been a very nice person. I really enjoyed meeting her. That is fantastic. Um, a couple of people have asked, uh, they said Justin Trudeau would be a great one to draw if you've sure. done any sure. Canadian prime ministers at all. Yeah. He's, he's, he's very handsome. It's sometimes hard to, more difficult to draw people that are really good looking because if you exaggerate a certain way, it can, it can mess up the drawing, like Grace Kelly or somebody like that. Or, you know, if, I don't like drawing people that are too perfect. Um, it's hard for me to draw myself. <laughs> well, of course, of course. Um, I have somebody here. Have you ever done this fine gentleman? George Burns? I have. Oh, I wish George I had. Burns. Yeah. From a magazine about cigars. Really? I draw him in like as I love to draw a cigar. I loved George Burns and I the drawing I was very happy with. It. I'm sorry I didn't send that to you, but it's oh, uh, yeah. kind of his. Are you uh, is that why you have that? This uh this actually my aunt uh collected dolls and when he was 100 this is actually it's supposed to be in plastic in a box it's uh <laughs> when he turned 100 mm. they got a limited edition of these uh it's still got you know everything is still intact he's on his pedestal the whole thing yeah, it's got the, cigar, the whole bit uh but i mean it really is such oh. a incredible oh i i just loved him so much just his voice and did you ever do uh bob denver did you ever do gilligan Never did, never did. I may do a drawing uh, for for a show and do Gilligan's Island and draw all the characters. So they're all wonderful. They're all such uh, characters I, I did. Um, How about Jeannie in the bottle? <laughs> I've never drawn her. I met her once, but I've never. Barbara Eden? Yes, very nice lady. Absolutely, absolutely. Claps coming in here. Um, Really, really fantastic. Um, is any of your work for sale? And have you drawn The Rock? The oh, Rock. She's not talking about Gibraltar. She's talking <laughs> I have not. I have not. Maybe I'll get to. That's a favorite. The rock yes, everything I have is for sale, except Alfie. 
Well, that makes me think, have you drawn a lot of things non-human? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, just a few dogs and so forth. I, I did do a um, Star Trek, it was a private commission and I did all of the, and I did a drawing of, um, of Patrick Stewart, Sir Patrick Stewart. Mm -hmm. I did it for the Wall Street Journal. His manager called me when it came out and said he wants to buy it. Oh, I don't doubt that, and, yeah. And then he did a Broadway play like a month later, and I did the drawing of that. And he asked me to come see him backstage. And we went, and he was so nice. He was just really friendly. And he loves caricatures of himself. And he has a collection of, of the originals. So he bought, I think, four of my drawings of uh, Sir Patrick Stewart. So that was very exciting. He's very witty. He has a dry sense of humor. He yeah. gets it. He totally gets it and appreciates yeah. it. I've seen him uh, uh, with working with WNAT 13. They did a fantastic, they did, you probably saw the campaign that they did and they brought him in where he's seated in a chair and they were using reverse psychology as far as supporting PBS and public television right. and supporting 13. So here he is, you know, speaking with this wonderful British accent, and he's telling people, um, you know, I am Patrick Stewart, and I don't, you know, watch the pledge drives, and I do not uh, think that, uh, you know, you should or need to support public television. Uh, there's no need for that. Everything's okay, and that type of thing. Um, because what is the worst that can happen? Uh, mm. As he's saying that, the worst that can happen is happening. The lighting guy comes in and takes the lighting away. Uh, they take the desk that he's at. Uh, he, they take him out of his chair and roll the chair away. The set goes black, and then the lights go black. <laughs> this is what could happen. And he was right. it was so fantastically uh, done. Yeah, very generous man. Very and generous. he so deadpan with it too. So mm -hmm. incredibly deadpan mm -hmm. with the delivery. Um, a little uh, Audrey Hepburn, anybody? Breakfast at Tiffany's? Wow. I mm. love that movie. I just, I, a lot of people love that film. And I actually, but the first job I ever had when I came to New York, a friend of mine was in the executive training program and he got me a job in the uh, accounting department because I was 17. I couldn't work as a salesman, but there I was in Tiffany's. But this movie is just so special to so many people. And of course the score. Mm -hmm. um, so what was this for, this project here? This was, all, this was for the Hollywood show. This was done as a as a piece for the Hollywood show. I mean, you really captured Audrey Hepburn there. Thank you. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Mm. She was a great lady too. The stuff she did in her lifetime for the the orphans and all the people in Africa. Very much, very charitable person. Abs absolutely. I just mentioned that because I happen to like nice people. I'm just so, oh, that's that's really what I'm like, yeah. There's a lot out there that aren't, and I'm all about that too. Nice people rule. Um, absolutely. And, uh, and I knew that about you. That's why I wanted you on the show. you you got a really friendly, uh, personality and you can see that actually in the expression of your work, you have fun, even though this is intense and this is work, that's your craft. And, you know, it's, uh, there's extreme skill and talent and years put in, you really have fun and enjoy doing this, don't you? Oh, I do. I'm so lucky, Jim. I, I think, uh, I think that I'm successful because I'm able to do work that I love. To me, that's the definition of success. And I I'm, I think of it just about every day that I get up, that I get to go and do something that I really love and I look forward to it. So don't think that I take any of this for granted. I know I'm blessed. Blessed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Merlin in Canada love breakfast at Tiffany's. Wow, that is wonderful. Audrey, such class. Uh, all of us love it. These are nice people. Absolutely. Uh, Karen asks, do you ever do Michael Jackson? I did. I did a long time ago. Pretty much, folks, he has said yes to all the ones you've mentioned. <laughs> He's done, you know. <laughs> I get tired when I think of all the drawings that he I He probably even did Gumby. <laughs> He's done it all. Mm. A few more left. A few more left. A few more left. I want to uh, do uh, what Schitt's Creek. I think I want to do that group. 
and uh, and, and and Game of Thrones. I keep uh, yeah about that. Those are all interesting. Well, you've done Mad Men, Mad Men, yes. Mad Men. Yeah, I mean, you've really captured that with that series. Thank you, thank yeah. you. I I really enjoyed doing that drawing because I loved that that show also. Now, how long did it take to do this one, the cast of Mad Men? The uh, uh, probably two weeks. I don't remember the exact time. Two weeks. I can wow. tell that a lot of work went into the patterns, the detail of the the fabrics, and so forth. But I enjoy doing that sort of thing. I sort of go on automatic and just draw cross hatching and uh, and uh, the the plaid jacket on uh, Robert Morris. Yeah thing i it's fun and i experiment all the time trying to find out different ways of making patterns and so forth now have have they seen this any of the cast producers of Mad Men? have they seen this i think the producer saw it because i drew for the wall street journal i drew the man that created it and i can't think of his name but i did mm. So, mm. I, so i think i must have sent it to him Karen's funny. She goes, maybe we should ask who he hasn't done. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> you might have more success with that. Yeah. <laughs> who has he not? Uh, Perhaps. And I've even done a few athletes and I'm one of the least athletic people you'd ever want to meet. But I've going back to the wall street journal, the first assignment they gave me was to draw a sports figure. And I told the person, I said, you know, I know nothing about sports. I, I don't know how this is going to work. And it, it worked. They had me do sports figures for about a year. And uh, I was always afraid that I would make the, you know, the football players look like they were in a chorus line or something. <laughs> you, know, you never know. You have to just go with the flow. You can't, can't hesitate. Well, what it is, is, you, yeah, you know how to do it. You you capture the essence of the scene, the situation. And um, do you ever, do you, do, as opposed to just, you know, pencil to paper type thing. Do you also do research on the person? Meaning, uh, do you uh, read their material, read their bios, watch more of their work than just maybe something that somebody said here, here's their reel, or here's one movie to watch or one book to read or whatever. Do you do all this background to get a real feel and essence of the person, like obviously Audrey Hepburn, some that you you just are a huge fan of and you know the essence, but some mm. where you're, you're commissioned or brought in, or it's a celebrity that you knew of, but maybe didn't know a super amount about. Do you do all kinds of other research? So you almost, not that you feel like you're them, but you can understand the essence of who that person is and you capture that in the work. Does that make sense? It makes sense. I wish I had time to do that. That would be fun, but I don't think I've ever really uh, done. I'm very lazy also, but I, <laughs> that would be nice to. to there do. I built him up that he brings out all the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> 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 he said, no, I do this with my eyes closed and, you know, okay, that's done, Fallon. <laughs> yeah. no. Next. <laughs> oh, not quite, not quite. You, uh, you're a master of the craft. We have more folks. Uh, how about some Stephen Sondheim here? <laughs> oh, God, that's like, <laughs> that is perfect. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. I guess they're asking some others. So uh, we'll go back to that in a second, but they're asking James Bond, uh, Michael Jordan. <laughs> I have drawn Sean Connery, but it was in that movie where he was in the submarine. It wasn't just James Bond. So I've not really. Drawn Tell that. us about uh, this one here, Sondheim. Uh, what was uh, this project? I think again, this was a wall street journal uh, drawing. And then I made it into prints. This is a print. Um, and so that was it. I, I actually, I'm very fond of Mr. Sondheim. I've met him a few times and uh, I think he has a very interesting face. He's really aged very interestingly, if that can be a, a word. Yeah, in a very uh, seasoned, uh, mm. right, in a way that's very complimentary, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah. We, we should all uh, age as well, <laughs> right, exactly like the the life lived and, and lived mm -hmm. well and right. Exactly. Some people are lucky to have that. I also um, have noticed, which I really enjoy 
is the respect that you have for everybody that we're talking about here, the way you're addressing them, you know, Miss and Ms. and Mr. And, and I'm honored to have done that person and I'm pleased that person enjoys my work. You're uh, very respectful of the folks that you're doing the work for and on, right? Well, it is genuine. I mean, I really do admire people that have these extraordinary talents and, uh, and it inspires me. So I do respect them greatly. And if they're nice people, I respect them even more. That's even better. Absolutely. That's, that's the thing. The nice thing is important. Uh, the King and I. This was the last production that they did of The King and I at Lincoln Center. And Kelly O'Hara, that won the Tony for that award, used to be my neighbor. She lived right across the street. And we became friends. I've drawn her does, at least a dozen times. And uh, right after she won the Tony, she packed up and moved to Connecticut. But that's okay. She's a family and everything. But we, I got to know her. And she's a very, very nice lady and very talented. Very mm -hmm. talented. I like this drawing. I like uh, sometimes a drawing will just work for me graphically in the design yeah. layout and just, just worked for me. And this was for what again, this particular? This was, this was the King and I that was last, it was produced at the Vivian Beaumont Theater in Lincoln Center, which was considered Broadway. So it's the King and I, yeah. It was, was it for Playbill or was it for? Well, what was the drawing was for yeah. um, uh, Broadway World, I'm almost sure. Oh, it was for Broadway World as well. Uh, the King and I, uh, very nice. Great comments coming in here. Um, here's another one, folks. Any David Bowie fans out there? I mean, <laughs> spot well, on. This drawing was done for the Boston Herald, and I think it was like in 88 or 89. And it was a black, uh, all my work for the Herald was in black and white. And you know that David Bowie has two different colored eyes. Yes. That's what I did to cover that area. And this drawing has been a big seller as a print. Uh, I've, I've really sold a lot of these and. Uh, he saw it. I don't think, I don't know. I don't think he did, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so, it's yeah. like a happy accident for me. I put it, you know, I put it together and it just started falling into place. And, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, when you're brought in to do, you know, this work of a specific person for a specific newspaper, magazine, whatever it has been, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's really more that they would say, David Bowie, take a look at it, as opposed to you, the artist saying, hey, David Bowie, look what I created. Right. I, that's called on spec. I would I right. Right. Spec work. Uh, I always joke and tell people when my pencil is on the paper, the meter is running. Right. I, I don't even draw for fun anymore, which is sad, but I, I, cause I get to enjoy it professionally. So I don't really even doodle. I used to just doodle constantly, like in high school and everything, but, uh, you, no, have I, to, you would have to charge yourself. Uh, that's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm very tight. I would, there'd be a big fight going on. There. You'll cost yourself a fortune. <laughs> Jill says, great Bowie. All of these are amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, this is amazing of David Bowie. That's neat of Bowie. Yes, love David Bowie. David Bowie, spot on. <laughs> very nice. I know. It's, oh. They love it. They I knew they would. I knew they would. It's getting really big. <laughs> <laughs> um, May West. Tell us about yeah. this one. This drawing... I wanted to do in the Klimt style because I really like his work. And I thought who would be better than to Mae West to put her in that style. And this drawing was crazy doing all of these patterns and everything. And I was looking for a gold paint that I could use and I couldn't find anything that I liked. And then I found this little watercolor set that I had from art school. And I opened it up and there was a little gold thing and it was perfect. It was like the perfect gold. So don't throw anything away. Wow. And this uh, was for what project? This was the main drawing for that Hollywood show that I did. They had gave it a special place in the, the gallery and it was up on a pedestal. It was that that's what that was for. Mm, really, really. And they're saying, wow. And, uh, <laughs> these are all spot on and thank each, you 
Each and every one of these uh, shown tonight are remarkable. You, sir, are a true master. Well, I'm not going to be able to live with myself now, but thank you so much. That was <laughs> Whenever you, if you ever get down, just come to the Gym Master Show live. We'll pick you right up. <laughs> Will do. Uh, and, and, and there you go, from Merlin in Canada. I hope you're enjoying this as much as we are, Ken. <laughs> oh, I certainly am. I certainly am. It's and Karen says, peel me a grape. LOL, May West. Love that's this. Right. That's right. Oh, right. oh, 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 May West. <laughs> <laughs> he does voices too. <laughs> I'm going to be in show business. I did this all. Uh, Fish in the dark. Tell us about this one. Well, Larry David is a. Yeah. That's right. Just, it, People are saying, are we Larry just, David or Bernie Sanders? Well, it could be a combo. <laughs> Well, he did that Broadway comedy a couple of years ago, and that's why I drew him. But uh, I, I just, he's such a funny man to me. Yeah. His Bernie Sanders is so spot on, isn't yes. it? He yes. is so, if Bernie Sanders had won, could you imagine Larry David would be quite <laughs> busy? <laughs> oh, my God. Absolutely. Um, so, so this is a, as a result of that production? Uh, right. This was done for uh, Broadway World, I'm sure. Yes. They you, they've uh, used you a lot, huh? Which is yes. So I started with them, and then I moved over to Playbill, and yeah. came back to Broadway World. It's like with a lot of people; it's like the studio system. They yeah make better offers and move you around. But I enjoyed working. For, I've enjoyed working for both of them. Did you, do, exposure. did you ever do Lucille Ball? Long time ago, and it it's not good. I wouldn't even keep. I think I threw it out. I, She's so great to draw. I mean, to someday maybe I'll do a a, a drawing of uh, the early I Love Lucy show with Fred Neffel and Ricky. Ricky and characters. Yeah, he did Cole Porter. Mm. Another favorite of mine, Cole Porter. This was one of the drawings from that music, the uh, CD catalog that I did for BMG Records. That that came from that. That's amazing. So that's, I mean, that's extraordinary, right? Because, I mean, this work in its various, uh, Jill says, you are amazing. Ken uh, Bernadette says, this is a treat uh, for our eyes and memories. Um, I mean, th this work, especially when it goes into these other avenues, uh, this is, this will live on in perpetuity. This will live on forever, this work. Um which is extraordinary. And again, it's uh, seen in various locations as well. Collections are in various new world stages and other places, like I mentioned in the introduction, and that's incredible. It's a nice feeling. I'm actually working on a book uh, of my drawings and uh, with a little bit of few stories thrown in there. And uh, the publishing world is sort of upside down right now, but I'm having a proposal made and then hopefully we'll get an agent and, and then a publisher. But if I don't get a publisher, I guess I'll self publish I'll make my, and I'll sell it on canal street or something. I'll just be out there pushing. It. <laughs> but, uh, I want to have a book for exactly the thing that you said. I'd like to have a. Permit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, your talent is admirable and your humility even more so. That's beautiful but, from Marsha. That's very nice. Thank you, Marsha. Juanita says, Ken, which is your absolute favorite, your personal favorite? Well, the uh, Count Basie, I always think of that drawing. I guess it's because it just worked for me and, and I just really liked it and felt that it was successful. And so that's, that would be the number one favorite. I have a lot that I like. And I have some that I don't like, but I, <laughs> that's the nature of the business. You know? That's the nature. Well, the, you really captured this one. Um, and it's funny because I mentioned that we were just watching, it was about three weeks ago, uh, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner with Spencer Tracy, Sidney Poitier, uh -huh. and uh, Isabel Sanford, and Catherine Hepburn. I did, I did a series of drawings. Ladies Home Journal put out a whole magazine just on Katherine Hepburn and they commissioned me to do a color drawing that I did in color pencil that was before Photoshop and a black and white drawing and this is the black and white drawing and that job when I was in Ladies Home Journal I was hired to do a drawing of uh, 
there was a movie that was not successful because, called uh, I Love Trouble with Julia Roberts and Nick Nolte. And they had me draw a portrait of Nick Nolte because he played a newspaper man. And this drawing was going to be in back of his, on his wall in back of his desk. And I was so excited. I was actually in California for something else. And they invited me to the studio. I went to this meeting. I thought, oh, this is just the best. So the movie comes out. And I'm waiting for the scene, and I see they're getting ready to go into the office. The entire wall was out of focus. And I said, I could have just thrown some paint on the wall. It would have looked just the same. And I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed that a couple of years later, they I was on a flight, and they showed that movie, and I wouldn't even look at it. But, you know, those things happen. It was still a fun experience. You know, this, um, this image of her, um, this is, the, she looked like that in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. I think she, mm -hmm. in one of the couple of scenes, she wore that outfit. Jacket over, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah that whole sort of with the hair up and uh, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And it's uh, those sandals or socks that she's got. Yeah, sandals with the socks, yes. Yes. Um, and her home was just recently sold. She was... Original or the, or the one in Connecticut. Old Saybrook, Connecticut, Fenwick, a beautiful mm -hmm. home sticking out into the Long Island Sound uh -huh. uh, that's visible from you know all points. Um, a couple purchased that house. She was from Hartford, Connecticut, and then st stayed in New England uh, right. and always paid homage to New England like Betty Davis did, that sort of yes, Yankee, right. New England uh, roots type thing. New England people seem to be that way. They, and it, there's... They should be proud, but they, they don't mind telling you where they're from. From Exactly. Uh, Jack Lemmon was from Massachusetts. He was one of my favorite actors, right. Lemmon. Right. I love Jack Lemmon. Uh, but that is so spot on of Catherine. Thank Hepburn. you. Really spot. Uh, and then, of course, we showed Alfred Hitchcock earlier, which I think mm -hmm. is absolutely incredible. Here is uh, Psycho. That's right. Wow. Perkins. I just read a biography about him. Did you? Yes. What did you learn? Oh, uh, he was a very strange man. He had a lot of. That's what I heard. Yeah. Things and, uh, but perfect I, for that role. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Uh, People are asking about the book. Is there a title to your book yet? Don't let this happen to you. No, I. I'm not. <laughs> I haven't thought of a time. Nice people only. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. There's but, classic Kate pose as well. Uh, Tony Perkins, love him. Um, cool stuff. And we have more folks. We have more here. How about you guys? Asked, somebody asked about rock stars, uh, Fats Domino and some of the others. Uh, have you have done yet to do him? Have yet to do him. There's so many people. Oh, yeah, you could. I mean, like right now, well, I mean, right now as far as like today, but generally over the years, was there a period where you were doing uh, a multitude every month? Or like how many, how do you space it out when you're doing them uh, when it's a busy season or or has been a busy season? Well, physically I could do, I used to be able to do two a week because I am slow with the dip in the pin and so forth. Um, and I would always schedule and be very disciplined. I've never missed a deadline. Mm. One mm. thing I can always say, if you give me a deadline, I'm going to make it. So yeah, uh, not like when I was in high school and missed all the deadlines. <laughs> pretty reliable. Here's some Stevie Wonder folks. Look at this. Mm. Yes, that was done for the LA Times. And what is the singer's name? Adriana, the the uh, girl with the... Uh, 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 Ariana Grande. Thank you. That's yes. who she was also in this uh, drawing, but I took her out because somebody wanted to have a print of Stevie Wonder, so I just Photoshopped her out of it. But I still have the, the one with her in it. And... I guess they were, they did a concert together or something in LA. I'm not sure why they hired me to do this. But, mm -hmm. So this was done for what again? The Los Angeles Times. It was for the Times. Mm -hmm. 
has he seen this? Do you know if uh, Stevie Wonder saw it? It's it's fantastic. Or felt it? I don't think you know. I don't. Well, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right. That's a good way. Yeah, good catch there. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think he was aware of it. Maybe I'm aware of it. That's that's what I should say. I yeah, say, maybe made aware of it. <laughs> mm. Stevie Wonder. Wow. Uh, psst, Merlin. Yeah, she's funny. You know what I mean. <laughs> we'll be made aware of this extraordinary artistry. That's what. <laughs> uh, oh, one of my favorites, of course, Jackie Gleason. And here he is as uh, Reginald Van Gleason. Well, I'm sure I'm older than you. And I remember the Jackie Gleason show. And this character was one that I was always fascinated with. And this, this drawing was done for the new exhibit. And I thought, because there's so much character and everything, the, the, the overcoat that he's wearing the top hat the you know and of course his face yeah uh, so that's what that was i what's I really, the exhibit there you mentioned a new exhibit that's happening well as soon as we get over COVID, i go back to new world stages i actually i was so nervous about leaving all of my artwork in the, the i got some friends together and uh got all of my work out so my apartment now looks like a gallery except a lot of the drawings are facing the other way it's very crowded here uh, yeah where you are now so so they're all there with you um we have some more to show but tell us about you know people like to know um the room that you're in and what's around you you're actually in the heart of the operation there right? i am that's over my shoulder where you see the light that's my drawing table and uh this was a dining room in my apartment that I made into a studio, and it's right next to my kitchen, which is very convenient. And uh, you can probably see a little bit of Alfie. I think I see just the back and one paw over on that side. I can't figure out how to point, but anyway, there he is. He's sleeping under my desk. He does that. He's always with me, and uh, it, it's it's just such a great feeling. But that's the the area I, I'd move the camera around, but I, every time I touch the co computer, something weird happens. So I won't touch it, but this, this is my space. I'm sitting at my computer desk, which is separate from the, I used to tell people that I would do that for exercise. And the phone is also here. So the only exercise I would get, if somebody would call me, I'd get up from the one place and go to the other. <laughs> very comfortable. Absolutely. Um, Oh, he's moving. Do you see Alfie and the do you see him over there? It's in there. He's oh yeah. Under the drawing table. Right, yeah, under the drawing table moving it's around. Alfie. Yes. And they say, yeah, oh, I see Alfie. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby Horowitz is here. She was our guest last night. One of them. Oh. Yeah. And she was excited about being here. Uh, she had said she was going to be here. Michael Colby said he, that he was going to be here because he was watching with uh when we had Bobby on last night. I'm in love with his drawings. I looked at the page and love all the postings. Maureen says, New World Stages, such a great theater. I saw your Warhol there, and I couldn't stop staring at it. Oh, isn't that nice? That's so great. I used to go occasionally sneak in at intermission if I was in the neighborhood because I, I wanted to watch people and hear them. Sometimes, of course, you wish you hadn't because somebody would say, oh, that's not him. <laughs> that's not oh, him. my. <laughs> but, you know. You have to take that. That's that's fine. That's part of the whole thing, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all part of it. Uh, we actually have a couple of things. We're going to go back to a couple more photos. Oh, not photos. Wonderful artistry here. Uh, we do have um, some video. Now, this is the the music we couldn't use because of the cop rate of the music. Right. And it is fantastic with the music. But maybe we can show it and... Um, show it and then maybe either talk over it or talk after it plays. But here, folks, you get to really see uh, Ken and some of his, through his eyes, as he sees them, the actual person and then the caricature. This is really terrific. There's music with it. It's a Sinatra song. We can't play it because of the copyright, but um, it is fantastic. Let's take a look at that. Sinatra and karaoke, but I'm not going to... I was going to say, we could sing. Yes. <laughs> Ken did it his way. There you go. This oh. is Ken Fallon, As I See Them.
Really terrific, huh? There he is. Steve Jobs, of course. Yeah, Lennon, Buffett. Yep, Joel Gray. Lena Horn. So many. Elizabeth Taylor. Mm-hmm. There's Betty. David Bowie. Yeah. Incredible. Here's your Orson Welles and your Johnny Depp. Yeah. It's Harvey. Oh, yeah. There's your Marilyn. <laughs> Liza. And you can, if there's any you want to say, Ken, they can hear you too. There's your bet. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's my Al Hirschfeld. Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis and Prince Charles and Sinatra and Elvis and Audrey Hepburn. And there you are. Oh. Yeah. Good looking guy. Oh. Good looking guy. That's a, now that we know you, we can hear you, let's watch that again. And maybe you can, you can point some of them out as they go by in case people are wondering who they are. Here it is again. And you can narrate. That's Yves Saint Laurent. And that's the man that wrote the music, all the uh, Fellini, Cary Grant. Um, of course, Louis Armstrong, who I also love. Gloria Vanderbilt. This is an architect. I can't think of his name. Cole Porter. And Steve Jobs. And John Lennon and um, Warren Buffett. Thank you. Lena Horn. Horn and uh, Hal Prince. Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Taylor. This is a designer, a very famous designer, and uh, Betty, and of course, David Bowie. And this is the Les Mis. This is Michael Yuri, mm -hmm. very talented actor, and the Orson Welles, Johnny Depp. Harvey Firestein, mm -hmm. Edgar Allan Poe. I've done some book jackets. I think this was one from Marilyn Monroe. Liza, Green Day, Hitchcock, and Bet, Rod Stewart. And this is um, Miles Davis, and Andy Warhol, Madonna, Madonna. Kennedy Onassis, Frank Sinatra, Frank Elvis, Audrey Hepburn. Hepburn. Yes. The other Prince Charles was in there as well. A very talented friend of mine, Jeremy. You recognize that last person? Who was that? <laughs> uh, anyway, Jeremy Swanton did the uh, the video, and it was really nicely done. Now, this one is uh, the Broadway one too, and I think we'll be able to talk over this one too, and okay. we'll play this one. Here we go, Ken Palin's Broadway. And you can That's tell us. That. And Joel Gray. That's me with a Forbidden Broadway. Oh, There's wow. There's the Boulevard, and that's uh, Butterf M. Butterfly. And this is uh, the, oh, it's so fast. I'm losing my Charlie Chaplin. It goes by fast, yeah. Yeah, because it goes with the music. And this is, uh, my mind is going. You know what we could do? I, I have the ability to pause it as we're doing it. So there you go. You can say who's what. Joel Gray and Cabaret. This was when he did the revival. Now and that's you. That's my Forbidden Broadway poster. I was in Schubert Alley for like seven years, the very first poster from uh, 45th Street. And it was so thrilling. I'd go down and, and stand in front of it and these Japanese Tourist would come by and I would volunteer to take their picture in front of a poster. But it was very exciting to have that up there. See, that's oh. 91. That's how long ago that was. That was yeah, 1991 and a half. <laughs> yes. But uh, I, I had not become a natural blonde yet. And that's <laughs> this is the last time that Glenn Close did Sunset Boulevard. And uh, yeah. I thought she was fabulous. And that was a lot of fun to draw. This was M. Butterfly, the last revival they did on Broadway. Another cigarette smoke. And this is the um, 
the Comet of 1812, whatever the title. Of, I love that musical. I can't think of the name and uh, I can't think of the singer that's down at the bottom with the accordion. He was the star of the show. But uh, And this was the, uh, the the musical that was made of the uh, the cartoon that was so popular. Um, on my mind. I would not, have, not from Mad Magazine. No, this is a couple of years ago it was not a success and it was it's still terrific children's yeah. uh cartoon and it and it all takes place under the sea oh yeah i know which one you're talking about maybe one of the viewers but i know which one you're referring this to is the musical of charlie chaplin which i thought was brilliant and it did not uh it was not a success but i really liked it and, and this was um so, la, 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 glass menagerie the one that um cool really incredible and this was uh drood the musical drood the last revival that they did spectacular and this is michael yuri doing uh torch song trilogy it's it's him getting into his drag and the one that you just the, when I sort of zip by uh, there. This is uh, Jude Law when he did his Hamlet on Broadway. It's been about nine years ago now, but that was that was one of the first Broadway drawings that I did. This is um, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. That's Cats, the last revival that, mm. and then the drawing after that is um, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Stella. <laughs> You're thinking of you're thinking of uh, Street. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Here's Patty Lapone. That's Patty Lapone. That's Patty Lapone. And uh, Playbill had these cruises, and they had me make that poster. This was that Oklahoma revival they did. That was. Oh yeah, that's right. And yeah. this drawing was censored, actually. The uh, and I think I don't know if this is the censored version. No, well, they censored it. The uh, the editors at Broadway World just can you can you uh, go down on it? Can you uh, bring it up? I can just show uh, the other way. Bring it so it goes tilts down a little bit. Yeah. So it cuts off right there. When they made me make her breasts smaller, which I thought was, you know, I get these things every now and then, and it's kind of upsetting because I don't think that they're offensive. But again, I. The client is always right, so I make the change. You make the change. Of course, Barbara right. Streisand, too, uh, which we saw earlier. is fantastic. And that's a Hades town. Really incredible. That's a show from a few years ago called Lucky Guy. Mm -hmm. It's Tom Hanks. And that's Laura Ephron, who wrote the, the play and... It really, it what does. It looks like, I'm just going back. It looks like Hanks there. Yeah, he's really lucky guy. Yeah. Cool. This is, uh, oh, I can't think of the name of this play. Something about youth. This is our youth or whatever. Uh. <laughs> well, you see so many of them. It must yes. Be. This is uh, Nathan Lane. when he I just to say Nathan Lane. Yeah. I should shut up and let you know what you to say. No, to no, you're 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 doing good. What was this one? This was that play where he played in the uh, '40s. He played a gay man who was in show business, and it was a very tough time for gay people because they were raiding bars and restaurants, and he was so afraid he was going to get arrested and ruin his career. This was King Kong. Did you see King Kong on Broadway? Yes. It was, it was amazing. Yeah, I it was. It was such an amazing production. It didn't make it, but I I, I was blown out of my seat. Uh, maybe the, the actual material in the show wasn't that good, but the special effects were wonderful. I can't remember the name of this play either, but it was good. <laughs> good, it was good yeah. Zephyl Merman. This drawing is from a Forbidden Broadway um, poster. That's the Gershwin that we saw earlier. Oh, that's this uh, Sondheim show, Passion, that they did. That's the revival that they did. Uh, 
13th Street Theater. That's the Sondheim, the different background. Cole Porter again. Stephen Schwartz. There was Schwartz. And how about this? This, yeah. this is a revival of Picnic. That's Once Upon a Mattress. That's the show that I did. I was telling you about doing the scenery. And I made the poster for that. That's Lip Sinka and down at the bottom. This is Once on this Island, the last revival that they did. That's, uh, do you know who that is? Who does that look like? Is that Pacino? Yep, thank you. Al Pacino, <laughs> yes, Al Pacino. Just from the eyes and the expression and the hand and just the, the hair, the whole, that's so Al Pacino. Oh, great, thank you. That was from China Doll. David Mamet play that I did not get to see, but I drew it anyway. And that's the King and I again with a different background. This is Audra. That was Audra McDonald doing um, uh, the the singer that always had the flower on um, Billy Holiday. Thank Billie you. Billy Holiday. That's uh, Kinky that was, Boots. Oh, that was Kinky Boots. That was Kinky Boots. That one zipped by fast. Well, there's the boots. <laughs> a lot of detail. This was a uh, Book of Mormon. Mm. This was Death of a Salesman. That was Death of a Salesman. This was, I um, can't remember the name of this one either. It's where one man played all of these roles. It was a very funny musical. So I just, this was Elephant Man. That's, um, the actor that was in the last uh, movie about Star is Born. I'm trying to think of his name, but um, he's been in a lot of movies, but he did Elephant Man on Broadway. This was uh, Waiting for Godot, and that's Patrick Stewart with um, Sir Ian McKellen. This was a revival of On Your Toes. Literally on your toes. <laughs> on your toes yes. really to draw. This is Sunday in the Park with George. Bette Hello, Dolly. Now I did what I took my old drawing of Bette Midler and just gave her a, a, a Dolly outfit. I just did this all with uh, Photoshop. So sometimes I cheat, but this came out way before the. The musical opened, so I didn't have any photographs to work from. Wicked. Wicked, yeah. Really nice. So the the colorization, the colorizing of it, or the color being added, obviously, is secondary. Yes. It's always a, a pen and ink drawing that, that I scan in, and then I go over everything with Photoshop. This is um, Little Shop of Horrors. They did a revival of this at the City Center. And Ellen Green, the lady there, amazing, because she did the original and she did the movie. And she was able to wear the same dress that she wore, the same size dress that she wore in the original production. And this is like, I don't know, 30 years later. And that's um, Gyllenhaal. Um. He played the uh, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yes, that's Jake. Yes, Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah. Um, the monster, the little. Um, yeah. Or the, yes. Exactly. Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, let's see what we have next. Everybody's enjoying this. I, I'm looking at all. The, I see tons of comments. Mm -hmm. This little foxes. And that's where Cynthia Nixon and now I'm forgetting this actress's name, but they reversed. I think every other night they would reverse roles. They'd play, a, you know, a different part. And it, I saw this production and it was great. And I love drawing those dresses and doing all of the, the ink work on them. It, it's, it's tedious in a way, but it's also fun to see the finished result. Oh yeah. This was Little Me, which was done at City Center. Cool, really nice. Mm -hmm. 
This was the last revival they did of Evita with Ricky Martin. Do you, um, when you supply a copy to the original requester, do you have a version for yourself that you frame that is yours too? Do you keep copies, obviously, I of do, everything? Yeah. I do make um, photocopies of everything, but uh, no, I don't frame them or anything. I don't have any of my art hanging in my apartment because I see it all the time. So it's not, uh, this was um, mm, Aladdin thing. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you're uh, <laughs> you're going down memory lane of all the the shows you've seen. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm hurting just thinking of all the work that went into this. It's incredible, yeah. We're trying this to was the Inspector General, I think. That's Michael Yuri at the top. Mm, here's another one. This was uh, I want to call it Frosty the Snowman. This is Frozen, right? Frozen, yeah, Frozen. So when this happens, when when you are tasked with doing these for mm -hmm. like a show, that type of thing. Right. Um, are you the official person or are there other people that do and or can do characters of that show? Are you brought in as you're the official well, one? Is that how no, it works? There's one other person that I know that's a friend of mine. It's, it's Squiggs. His name is Justin Robertson and he uh, works for um, Broadway dot com and we usually bump into each other at the shows but he does uh, a drawing of like me all the broadway shows and a lot of the off-broadway shows mm. i don't think of him as competition we're just both doing the same thing and in, in different styles so his work is different from mine and uh, di different styles yeah, it's not a i don't try to break his arm or anything when i see him we're very friendly Right, exactly. Right, and probably. And I appreciate that he's doing it. I, because caricature is something that, because of the sad situation with publications, it's diminishing. And I think this I know. Is, um, one of my purposes of doing theater stuff is to carry on the tradition of Val Hirschfeld, because it meant so much to me, and I know a lot of people, uh, younger people today, don't even know about it. About but any, any of this, right? Exactly. So I enjoy doing it, and I was hoping that that's that it would keep it alive. I don't, I don't really know what the future holds, but um, I guess as long as I can sit up and hold a pencil, I'll be doing it. Tell us about this one here. This was uh, on the town, the last revival, which I enjoyed very much, and I did this as a, as a paste up. I did all these drawings and then cut them out and put them on a uh, a black background with those are photographs of famous buildings in New York and I just pasted them on. This was uh, what's the show about the um, the people that are at the airport in Canada when the the nine eleven happened. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was a girl that played the airline pilot. You know who it also looks a little bit, a little bit like? Who, who, who? Rachel Maddow. You know, when you said that, I I saw it and I never thought of that before, but yes. Rachel Maddow, yeah. I'm stronger, maybe I should just... <laughs> reassign it? <laughs> Officially reassigned. Yes. Oh, oh, another oh, world premiere. <laughs> really? Yes. There's your Rachel Maddow. You've seen it first <laughs> on the Jim Master right. Show live. <laughs> Tell anybody. That's just between all of us. Us, and, right. the, us and the Lovities. This Tell was them. a drawing I did for um, a revival of the importance of being earnest. And this actor it was a male who played this in drag, but he was so real. He, he took it very seriously. And it was just an amazing uh mm. Performance and this drawing had a lot of work in it, a lot of detail. The dress, there's a oh, and I took uh doilies, those paper doilies, and oh, I yeah, make lace. So, you, I don't know if you can see the whole drawing, but is it the collar and the cuffs? And it's all, but oh, that's, the, yeah, fun to do that. That's yeah. really, yeah, no, that's 
I mean, the detail uh, is extraordinary. Yeah, I can see it up close here. How about this one? This cool. is the play, it's only a play, and it's Nathan Lane on the far left, and uh, Broderick, Matthew Broderick. Matthew Broderick, yeah. And way over on the right is um, Stockard Channing. Yeah. Holding the booze bottle, and the man in back of her is F. Murray Abraham, who won the Oscar for um, Amadeus. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sure know. they've yeah. they've seen this work too. Like yes, yes a lot of them because you know it, you can see it on your phone. A lot of I'm sure the actors go after it comes out, and they're they're going backstage at night, and they say, "Did you see this?" Uh, you know, and. Uh, but you don't necessarily hear from them saying, oh, that was, I love that. That was great. Not so, as much as people would assume that you would. Right, right. Sometimes I think, yeah. Sometimes when I meet them, they might say something. Have they contacted you and said, any of them over the years, I would like you to do one of me? Because they love your work. They saw other things you did of other people. And they're like, oh, I, I want Ken to do me to think uh i can't think of any uh they're very careful with their money usually like patrick stewart's kind of a, a rare situation where he's spending they usually think that you should just give it to them mm -hmm. give them the work so yeah some of these comments coming in come from away and all these come from away that's the yeah. show come mm -hmm. from away. on the town fast and yeah that was a great guys back whom you did for Michael as well. Tony well, Yazbek was in the on the town drawing, and I, you know, frozen. They're <sighs> yeah, they're all mentioning the different ones. And Michael is very nice. alert. Laura Lynn, yeah, it's got it all in here. So much spectacular. Did, Thank you. Did for you ever have Michael Colby on your show? Yes. Yeah. He's yeah. An interesting fella. Grew up in the Algonquin Hotel. My gosh. I know. He told we had a, an it's extraordinary great. conversation with that. Yes. Um, yes. Ken, you have been such an amazing, interesting, fabulous guest. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing your awesome talent with us, Karen, in Nova Scotia. Little Shop of Horrors was the other one, I believe, too, that we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, we missed theater. So much. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. Missing right. theater. Loved Wicked. Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper. <laughs> yeah. Gentleman's Guide. Yeah. Gentleman's Guide. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. They're all in there. Yeah. Yep. Smart smart group that watch your show yeah they really are uh and, and they mentioned al pacino too when i mentioned it la caja fall bird King, caja fall, that's right brian silverman that's uh right. bobby horowitz says you're making me want to get the show i'm writing up and have you do the drawings ken fallon i'm ready <laughs> ready nathan i'm ready Lee. i miss the theater you know i like and every the nance nathan nance. that's the show the nance the nance oh my goodness i need to this was good, you know why? Because it was a good quiz also for our viewers or international audience here. I love it. He's yeah. SpongeBob was SpongeBob, that's right. That's what that and Scarlett Johansson was in Cat on a Hut and Roof. SpongeBob, thank you. They all know Bettina and, and Haas, Haas and Swanton. Yes, I know those guys. Yeah, and uh, Marianne got it too, and Bettina. You know, I used to give a quiz on the ships when I was doing the the lectures on the cruise ships and I would do this sort of thing, show people and they'd have to guess them and write them out. And uh, I gave out prizes and so forth. Mad magazine. If the people that are watching us now had been on that cruise, I would have run out of gifts. I mean, I would have <laughs> my pleasure, Bobby Horowitz, Hudson so Swanton. Uh, everybody watching on the YouTube channel, we would love it if you subscribe to the YouTube channel. 200 plus episodes of the Gym Masters Show Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series are there for your viewing pleasure and binge watching. A lot of people binge watch our shows, which is fantastic. Oh, that's a uh, great compliment. We're here every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Although this weekend, we're, we've got two shows tomorrow, two shows Saturday, two shows. I feel like I'm a theater. Two shows on Sunday. <laughs> Uh, with all these different guests from Europe and from America. Um, we're here watching. That's I know those guys there in Chicago. Chicago. 
Shirley Jackson was another. Uh, Shirley Jackson was the lady with the glasses with the, uh, yeah, they've done a movie about her, I think. She wrote all of these mysteries and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. That's right. We have some Gee. more. Yeah, this is cool, huh? We've got our audience. This is what I love about doing this show the way I do it is I love, I'm very viewer centric in my professional work oh. in television radio. So I like the interaction of our audience. Oh, yeah. they, feel, they feel invested in what we're doing here. Yes, it's really great. Another one? Which one is this? That's um, the thing with uh, Hed Hedvig and the Angry Inch. And this was when um, the guy with three names that <laughs> started at the revival. Everybody's going to be telling me who it is. It's the guy with three names. It's on How I Met Your Mother or your father. How I Met Your Mother. I can't think of it. The, the lady that designed the costumes. Sent Not me David Hyde Pierce. No, no. Uh, uh, he was Frazier. No, this is... Um, how I Met Your Mother? But anyway, the, the lady that designed the costume sent me a very nice note, which I really... Well, that's... That's saying that she liked the way I... Our audience, I'm sure, will get those three names in a second. <laughs> oh, Neil Patrick Harris. That's the one. That's right. Thank Bettina. You. Bettina <laughs> scores on the Gym Master Show, love. We love Bettina E. Bettina yeah. E. Is she related to Sheila E. at all? <laughs> Who knows? Bettina E. They all got Neil Patrick Harris. Mm -hmm. Thank you. He Thanks. was fantastic. You know, speaking from one host to another, I mm -hmm. thought he was fantastic when he hosted the uh, Tony Awards. Yeah, he was funny. And a couple of other uh, shows. Very, very cool hosts. Uh, oh. He was really good uh, as a host. And this coming from a host. I well, I'm glad we weren't giving out prizes tonight for people to guess who it was. We would have. <laughs> we would, we'd run out of prizes. I'm telling you. Uh, you're an amazing so, artist. I love these drawings. Uh, recognize all the shows. Great stuff. Thank I'm you. so honored to have been on your show. Uh, loved Hedwig. Yeah. And we were happy to have you on our show as well, Bobby. Uh, you were amazing last night. Uh, people still talking about that episode. Neil Patrick Harris, Doogie Howser <laughs> on ABC. Doogie. That's right. That's right. That's right. Michael. Doogie Howser. All right. So this is really cool. The, the audience says that we should be giving them points and all kinds of stuff. I know. It says, love this drawing of the producers. I love the show. All the drawings shown tonight are amazing, extraordinary talent. Ken, I agree. I concur. That's why I'm honored to have him on the show. And uh, when Oops. COVID passes and we can get together, we'll get together for a bite to eat. Yes. I would love to do that, Ken. Yes. I'll pick up the check. I don't say I pay it, but I'll pick it up anyway. Uh, does that mean we're only going, that means we're only going to White Castle or? <laughs> well, I love White Castle. Danny Burstein. Actually, so do I. White Castle's yeah. good. <laughs> it's Danny Burstein when he did Fiddler on the Roof and he's there. Yeah. Mm. friend of mine and i love him to death he's so talented very nice man uh that's uh dear evan hansen mm -hmm. and then you saw that that's the hamilton yeah that, that one it really is brilliant and this is a individual drawing of um lynn lynn, lynn well um, Manuel miranda yeah really cool now has he seen this one to your knowledge? I don't know. I've never. Len, if you're watching, here it is. There it is. And I think he could afford to buy the original. <laughs> yeah. This was uh, uh, the thing about the rock band with the um, uh, Jack Black did the movie. I can't think of title. Gee. Well, those are Cheetah Rivera's legs. I was just about to say we could pause there and everybody would. Uh... And I was commissioned to do this drawing to give her for a, a, an organization called Dancers Over 40. And I think she was 80 when she got this. <laughs> she said, I'm way over 40. Mm -hmm. she was Karen says in Nova Scotia, says, Ken, you're, you're a very inspiring uh, guest. Love, love, love your work. And Marcia says, so happy you're a lovety now. There you go. It's cool I'm, stuff. Uh, Michael <laughs> says, with Fallen in the Neck. Oh, he's talking about the um, the drawing of uh, Lynn. Yeah. Manuel, the, the 
my name was hidden in his neck and the scarf that was around his neck. That's what he's. So let's reveal this yeah. one. Everybody's looking at this one and say, what's the reveal here? And the reveal is Cheetah. Cheetah. Yes. yes. Cheetah Rivera. She's amazing, isn't she? Yeah, she and yes. I, I've always enjoyed her and also Rita Moreno. They yes. are timeless, ageless, and bundles of incredible energy, both. I got to meet Rita Moreno. I've met Cheetah several times. He's a lovely person. But last year I was at the uh, Dick's uh, Birdland at a, and uh, Rita Moreno was seated at the next table. And I'm thinking to myself, should I, because I normally don't approach people. And I just turned around and she was smiling at me. And I said, oh, I just, West Side Story. I mean, yeah. <laughs> she was so nice. Do you remember when she was on Electric Company on the yes. PBS Kids show with yeah. Morgan Freeman as well, who used to be right. on that show? Right. Yeah. Right. And they're all still going strong. Still going strong. He's brilliant, of course, with voiceover yes. work, extraordinary voice. There's another coming. You saw That's, that one. Oh, yeah. The color purple. Yeah. That was the last cabaret revival that they did. You really capture it. I tell you, you really capture it. That was an American in Paris. I loved that production. I don't know if you saw it. It was so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You really captured that one too. That's the, um, the band, some, um, the band, not the band. Well, it won the Tony and everything. I'm not thinking of the name, but, um, some body wrote on one of the uh, chat rooms for Broadway world. They were criticizing me and they said that I drew the, the lady in it. It was like a, not very flattering, but that's how I saw her. I didn't, I didn't think it was bad, but anyway, I think it's, yeah. Bernadette says, where else would we be able to interact with such fantabulous guests? Thank you as always, Jim. What a treat and an honor to, is it, it is to be a viewer. My pleasure. My pleasure, Bernadette. I appreciate those words. Um, I hope you spoke to Rock's story took a few minutes. <laughs> oh, the band's boy. visit. The band's visit. Thank you. I had band. I knew band was in it. <laughs> okay. I tell you, I wish we had prizes. We should. We should I, I, we're working on, you know, people want lovity hats, mugs, t-shirts, things of that mm. nature. We've got to create a logo. we got to create a design, a lovity Gym Master Show live, you know, design. And I've been trying to think of all these different designs that we could create yeah. for that. Um, have a contest for that. Yeah. Design. Sure. That's uh, Kevin doing uh, present laughter. Kevin's last name is not coming to me. Klein, Kevin Klein. Thank you. <laughs> and Steve Martin says the band's visit. Yep. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. And uh, there's another one coming up. This is, believe it or not, folks, the, the video that we're pausing is a two minute, 49 second video. Sure. It would have sure. been gone a half hour ago, but we're pausing because yeah. it goes, they go by so fast. We want to be able to show you the visuals and because we have the ability to talk over it, this also has music. Uh, I think it's uh, Duke Ellington. Is it uh, on Lullaby yeah. of Broadway is Lullaby what? Lullaby of Broadway, yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. we're, we're actually uh, talking, which is actually better. We actually are talking with the creator, with the artist himself, and he's narrating what we're looking at, which I think is extraordinary and so special um you know it's enhancing what we're looking at here having you do this Whoop, that was a fast front front. page they really go by fast there's there you go refresh front that. page oh that, that's cool i see i borrow from myself i borrowed the guy that was in front page that was also in um mad men down in the mm -hmm. lower corner and and uh bobby morse that was in that and that's the guy that used to be on Roseanne that played the father. Uh, John, John Goodman. Goodman. John. Yeah, Goodman. Yeah. And now now on the revival or reboot of Roseanne. How about this one? War Paint, Patty Lapone, and Christine Eppersall. Klein. They're saying like Klein. Klein. Thank you. <laughs> I, I uh, Bettina E. and Michael Colby are really battling it out. 
I think they're 50 uh, 50 right about now. <laughs> it's so nice to be alert. <laughs> I know. What year is this? Oh, and when, really? and when will this year end? Uh, tell us. Network? Oh, yeah. I love that production. And this is one of my favorite actors, and I can't think of uh, his name. Brian Cranston. Thank you. Because I saw it, and you know, being a television guy myself, and that was really good. I love the original movie too, but yes. uh, I, I always wish Network lasted longer because it was so good. Yeah, it was the staging was just so clever, and yeah, I mean, it was actually like you were. It was a television uh, studio. Uh, Michael brings in war paint. He war mentioned. paint, right? Now, yeah. in this drawing, I did not individually draw all of those people. I cheated, of course. He said, like playing Jeopardy. It's like playing Jeopardy. Yes, yes, exactly. I'm your host, Jim Masters. Thank you for joining us this evening. <laughs> we are uh, testing your knowledge. Brian Cranston, you got it. Absolutely. Um, no, but that that you really captured it there. Uh, absolutely. This was Waitress. Really nice. I, I like drawing food. You asked me if I... Yeah. Oh, this is a foodie crowd. Uh, I love drawing food. I've drawn. I've done some restaurant work where I've drawn food. And uh, what kind of food is your favorite to draw? What's my favorite food to draw? Yeah, Just like a nice a hot fudge sundae or a piece of uh, pie a la mode or something like that. Uh oh. <laughs> go eat some dessert after this. <laughs> You're going to start working up this crowd. I That's did a pop up show. You know, in addition to doing these uh, shows. Um, you know, the, the structured shows I do sometimes a pop-up show and I did a, I did a foodie festival host chat show where it was me. We didn't have a guest. Instead, we had interaction with all these viewers. They sent in recipes. We did food photos and I cooked a whole meal and had a whole dinner and was dining with the viewers. It was supposed to be maybe an hour, 45 mm -hmm. minutes. And it was a two and a half hour food fest with yeah. all these lovely viewers. Um, you know, what's really cool. The way the colors are uh, where you are positioned in that little square, it almost looks like you're wearing a sweatshirt filled with beautiful holiday colors. Oh, on. yes. I'm wearing. Yes, you're very festive tonight, Mr. Fowler. I'm like that stripper in Gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm a come, all, come all ye faithful. Trying, yes. <laughs> You're so nice to put me in lights. Of course. I know you love color. Uh, yes. I can't think of the name of this play. Either. That's... Um, okay, Bettina and uh, Michael. Uh, let's see if we can go back. There it is. It goes... The, the clips are so quick. Yeah. What about Carol King? Beautiful? Is that the name of it? Oh, Carol King's was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. that's beautiful. Yeah. And that is beautiful. Uh, Festive Fallon, Bernadette says. Uh, Laurie Metcalf. Laurie Mac yeah, Laurie Metcalf, who was Roseanne. Yeah. He was drawing, yes. Doll's Life was the Doll's musical. Life was the musical scene. Okay, it was something about another. A Doll's House Part Two. Yes. Yes. This is true. In a, f a font of trivia, especially stage and film. Uh, Greece? No. It almost looks like it, doesn't it? Look like Olivia Newton John and uh, Travolta a little bit there. It does. It actually does look like that in a way. Wow. Even the, well, and it takes place. The you know her beginning yeah. of her career was in the I guess the late fifties. Mm -hmm. That would be around the Greece time. Well, there's a lot of repurposing that can happen here tonight. I'm <laughs> Rachel <fine>. Maddow, <laughs> Greece. <laughs> Save you a lot of time. Not. Waste not. Oh, oh, oh. anything goes. That was anything yeah. goes. That was yeah. Kind of jumped jumped real fast there. That was yeah. anything goes. Let's see if we can. Oh. Well, you okay? It was a phantom there that went by real fast. But yeah, I saw that. They drew for their what fiftieth? Not fiftieth. Was it thirtieth anniversary for Phantom? There we go. There. And I was so amazed because that show has been running so long. It was like it had just opened. It was such a beautiful production. I'd seen it several times. What was this one? Phantom of the Opera. It, it was they did their 30th anniversary. I, I did a drawing. This is um, Frank Langella. Oh, yeah. And this is the Phantom. This yeah. is the Yeah. Yeah. I had the pleasure of uh, co-hosting the national segments for 
PBS and great performances when they did the celebration of the 25th anniversary of Phantom of the Opera. And okay. my co-host, my co-host was Denise Richardson, uh, mm -hmm. and we filmed the actual segments at the Majestic Theater, and they lowered the chandelier so the shot was with the chandelier right behind us as we were talking to camera yes. at the music theater and that was for great performances and that was that was an honor to do that and it was really yeah. incredible uh and that was the 25th anniversary and there you are carnegie hall there i am i made it you made it to carnegie hall that's right practice 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 um, that's me <laughs> Really, really cool. Really, really fantastic. That really is spectacular yeah. stuff. And, and, um, yeah. Ooh, Phantom of the Opera. And uh, it's Jake Epstein who did Tales of Tinseltown. Um, Jake Epstein who you did for me and beautiful as well. Yeah, absolutely. And a uh, couple more here we have in the photo form. We wanted to make sure we got those videos in because they really are uh, fantastic uh, displays of your extraordinary work. Um, cannot do any of this without seeing Groucho Marx. That's a new piece that I did uh, for the show, you know, the yet to be done exhibit. And Hirschfeld knew the Marx Brothers and he did a lot of Marx Brothers posters, which are very valuable now. So I, I felt I had to do a Groucho Marx, but I, I find him very funny and I've always enjoyed the Marx Brothers. So, so this is another exclusive uh, premiere right. we're seeing here for the first time it's ever. Been, that's right. You did an extraordinary job on that. Thank you. Absolutely. And the way he would do that with the hand, the fingers, the eyes going up all the time, mm -hmm. that, that is quintessential. Groucho, you really captured him. Why? Uh, so this project that you're working on, Ken, tell us more about it so people can get primed for when it's going to be happening, where they're going to be able to see this work and all of this, because this is very I really, I really don't know because of the whole thing with theater, because until the theater opens, they won't open New World Stages. So that, that particular exhibit, I, I don't know. If I plan another one in another location, that will be different, and I, I don't know. That I'll be able to do that, but I'll anything that would eventually, as a result, end up online, possibly, possibly. And this world, you never know, right? With everything that's right. happening these days, you never yeah. know. You never everything know. Everything changes so quickly. Oh, that's what's his name? <laughs> that's from Timothy. Your name? Call me by your, yeah. Timothy Chalamet. Timothy, yes. Yeah, that's a that's, that's a great. Name. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, Kathleen Walker says you should add a Jim Masters drawing. Wow. Uh -huh. Love that <laughs> idea. Love that idea. <laughs> yes. I'm sure I would love it. Uh, a wonderful evening with, uh, thank you, Ken and Jim. Uh, wow, what a treat. Very talented, Ken. Thanks for sharing. Too many great adjectives to describe Ken's work. Uh, thanks very much for sharing your talent with us. Amazing stuff. Um, it really, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And uh, I love that Groucho drawing. That was Bobby Horowitz saying that as well. And of course we have Buster Keaton. I love Buster Keaton. I even, I had a Basset Hound once that I named Buster, but this is also a new piece. I could draw Buster Keaton from now until the cows come home. He just so he says great face and all throughout his career, his expressions. Oh yeah. The drawings for the proposed exhibit. Somebody had asked, are uh, there others who you still definitely want to draw that you know they are on your definite list? I really hope I get a chance to draw that for you know and and do you ever draw some uh for the sake of it meaning you weren't commissioned you weren't hired but you love that person so much or you just have a real hankering for wanting to draw that person that you just drew them that hasn't happened for a long time but i'm usually motivated by a show if i'm going to have an exhibit i 
I work like the devil to get good stuff done, but uh, I'm not getting any younger and it's like <laughs> just to do a drawing because uh, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I have enough work to keep me busy. So that would be a luxury to just, you know, draw somebody like that. So now, you know, so now, you know, folks, <laughs> he loves his work and he takes time to, uh, to share it with the world. And uh, Bobby says, I remember speaking with you a while back and you are the real thing, Ken Fallon. Actually, I'm his better looking twin brother, but whatever. Yes. You are now a lovety, which is fantastic. Marianne says, Ken, I miss you. Same. I miss you, Marianne. The same events. I'd see Marianne oh, yeah. stuff and. What oh, would, sweetheart and Michael Colby is so talented and all of them. And Steve Martin owns a huge amount of my drawings out in Omaha, Nebraska. He's a yeah. He's a patron and so. The, what would you say to somebody watching the show live now, or who watches this later in the archives on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, uh -huh. and they are considering doing this work? now going into this kind of work now what would you say maybe as a source of uh, inspiration for them um to inspire them to to forge ahead with illustration caricature anything to do with maybe animation too because that's so big these days yeah a lot of people are doing that and they're doing computer graphics because it's a whole new world and uh, publishing is not in a in a good space now everything is changing it always has so if you really love it you should do it and um and just see how it works out um i've given a few classes i i, I don't think you can really teach caricature but you can sort of polish what people show you and give them little hints and so forth and so um go for it and if you really Believe in yourself and you like what you're doing. Don't let anybody stop you. Have you ever thought of stopping over the years? Were there any time where you was like, this morning, I this morning I would, no. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier in the career when jobs were scarcer and I was wondering, you know, is the phone ever going to ring or am I ever going to get more work? And will I be able to survive? Will I be able to make a living at this? And, uh, so, you know, you get discouraged. Everybody gets discouraged. I love reading biographies and autobiographies and reading about how people, you know, thought they'd never survive or they were in rough times, but they kept going. But they kept going, right. I, I'd say anything that you want to do. My friends Kyle and Jeremy that are in Chicago are uh, aspiring composers. Well, they've written shows that have been produced and... It's not easy, but then nothing yeah, well, is it's really easy. So the, the thing to do is be yourself and, you know, enjoy yourself. Exactly. Beautifully said, my friend. You really are uh, amazing. You're a uh, treasure. You're extremely talented, very humble. I agree with Michael. Uh, there are a few things beyond my Ken. I agree. Um, <laughs> Karen one Nova Scotia wants to know, is Alfie still sleeping underneath the... <laughs> yeah, she's still back there. Let me see if I can move out of the way. Which way do I go? I can't move. I can't move the right direction because I'm... Well, there he is. Can you see him under the desk? Yeah. <laughs> passing, passing a note. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That is. I like, I, I like the way you did that. That was beautiful. You had slickly done like choreography. <laughs> it's just the reverse, and I'm like, you know, that was beautiful choreography. <laughs> like, Speaking of that, Jim, I'm going to have to take him out for a walk. Yes. Very yes. Simple. He's been very good. Uh, he's been very, very good. So cute. Uh, so cute. This was amazing, Ken, and I really appreciate uh, your time with us. Uh, your extraordinary decades of talent and thanks for sharing with us a good deal of it tonight uh, we really just scratched the surface of uh, your talent your expertise and uh, Bernadette here says happy holidays Ken please stay safe stay well 
Thank you again for sharing your gifts with us. Anne says, thank you for this wonderful evening. We'll be watching for your book. You will have to come back, uh, come to Jacksonville, Florida for a book signing when it's released. That's so sweet. All ready to get it. Thank you, Ken. It's been a great night as well. Truly, Ken, I really appreciate all the time. And uh, would you believe we've chatted for two hours and 40 minutes? I can't believe it. I, when you said 90 minutes at first, I thought, how am I going to fill 90 minutes? I don't know. But it goes by quickly, doesn't it? You don't feel like it because it's a, it's not an interview. It's a uh, conversation. Yes. What a most amazing evening. Thank you, Ken. Moi. Moi. Thank you. Hope you and your family have a Merry Christmas. Juanita still with us late into the hour, like 3 a.m. Oh. South Africa. Great conversation. Love your work, Ken. Stay safe. Bobby Horowitz. Just inspiring. Thank you. Um, great conversation. Love your work. And uh, Maryland has a has to be a stop in your book tour. Steve Martin, wonderful show. Thank you, Steve. We appreciate having you with us as well. You have a wonderful holiday. You stay safe. You be well. Keep creating. Keep me posted as well. You know, we have okay. our contacts offline when you're doing more things, and I'll be happy to, you know, Absolutely. tell tell everybody about it and uh, you're welcome back anytime. And I, I sincerely hope that um, the show met your expectations and you enjoyed your time with me as much as I have with you, Ken. It's been a pleasure and I really appreciate you having me on Jim. I wish you a happy, my eyes are getting big. I'm like, <laughs> I like that. That's your look. That's that cool look. <laughs> right. okay. I toast you, my friend. You have a good night. You take care. Thanks for being with Thank us. You. Good night. Good night. The amazing Ken Fallon, and you got a chance to really enjoy and learn more about his extraordinary work. I'm sure you've seen a lot of that work, but if you hadn't, now you know uh, who he is and what he's all about, and he really is incredible. Review just quickly some of the, and we'll go really fast, uh, some of the work is like extraordinary. And some of these, like this here is a, a like a world premiere exclusive you're seeing really the first time ever on the uh, Jim Master Show. That's Groucho, of course, and Jackie Gleason as Reginald Van Gleason and Psycho and Stevie Wonder and Alfred Hitchcock and Cole Porter and Catherine Hepburn and Mae West. Yes, and for all, uh, Ari David, and of course the cast of Mad Men, everybody loves that, and David Bowie and The King and I and Stephen Sondheim and Audrey Hepburn and Bette Midler, just... This just scratches the surface. Um, years and decades, Barbara Streisand, Angela Lansbury, Patti LuPone, and Marilyn, of course, uh, Monroe, Miles Davis, Leonardo DiCaprio, Picasso and Lady Gaga, James Dean, and on and on and on. The cast of Hamilton, George Gershwin, Errol Gardner, Elvis, cast of The Color Purple, Liz Taylor, and again, just just a few, to name a few here. Count Basie, which is his favorite. You asked what is his ultimate favorite of all the ones that he has done throughout his whole career. This is his ultimate uh, favorite. Um, and that, of course, is the wonderful Count Basie. And uh, he really captures it, doesn't he? He really absolutely... Uh, captures it. All of those uh, watching on our YouTube channel, we would love it. As we build the channel together, we would love it if you subscribe to the channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash Jim Masters TV. In a minute, I'll tell you about the amazing guests we have coming up over the weekend. It's incredible. Uh, Betty Davis and Andy Warhol. And there he is doing his thing. Extraordinary, renowned illustrator and caricaturist, Ken Fallon. Alfie, <laughs> what's it all about, Alfie? And there he is. There he's doing the Buster Keaton, if you look closely. Cool guy, great talent, humble man, uh, exquisite work, absolutely exquisite work. And I love the fact that we were able to really talk about uh, his early beginnings, talk about the nuances and some of the idiosyncrasies of doing the work, and um, maybe it inspired somebody else who's out there watching who would like to go into this line of work. Uh, not as easy it as it looks. Nothing in, you know, in life is always as easy as uh, 
everybody makes it look. Even this show takes a lot of time uh, to do, but we love doing it for all of you. And let me tell you about some of the extraordinary people that are coming up. We have an amazing show coming up. We're on twice tomorrow, which is unbelievably amazing. We have uh, Lady Bain, the R&B sensation, Lady Bain. She is going to be with us at 4 p.m. Eastern. Tremendous singing. She's going to uh, reveal a new holiday song. We're going to have a great time with her. She's returning to the show um, because you guys have asked her to come back. She wanted to come back. So she's here for a very special holiday episode, holiday concert, 4 p.m. Eastern. Um and that's going to be a very special time from 4 to about 5.36 tomorrow, right here on the Gym Masters Show Live. So look for that. That's going to be incredible. Uh, we're going to have her here on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. So we're back tomorrow for a special holiday episode with R&B singing sensation Lady Bain. She's all excited. We can't wait to have her back. Then tomorrow night, Irish-American baritone, Emmett O'Hanlon, who you know originally from Celtic Thunder, is going to be here tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific. He's going to be performing live some Christmas songs and so much more at his piano. Uh, he's a brilliant baritone. He just, he's just returning from Germany. He's from New York originally. He was also performing with the Lyric Opera in Chicago. Uh, most of you know him originally, of course, from Celtic Thunder. Then on uh, Saturday originally from Celtic Thunder as well, brilliant singer, songwriter, musician, Keith Harkin, who is going to be with us live at 3 p.m. Eastern. And that's going to be uh, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. GMT. He is from Ireland originally, lives in L.A., but uh, he and his family are in Portugal right now. He's going to be live from Portugal. He's going to perform live on the show. That's so these are uh, going to be on our YouTube channel exclusively. Lady Bain, tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Emmett O'Hanlon on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell, too, so you don't miss any content. And that way you can comment when you subscribe as well. So Emmett tomorrow, uh, Keith on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Connor McGinty is here. 3 p.m. Eastern, live and direct from Ireland. Uh, that is going to be uh, as well on Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. in Ireland, Scotland, and England. On Saturday night, jazz vocalist extraordinaire and dear friend, the last time we were together was at Jazz at Lincoln Center. She is uh, from Chicago. She's going to be live from Chicago. The one and only Tammy McCann is going to be with us live on Saturday night. So again, Lady Bane, the R&B sensation, is going to be with us on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's going to be a really cool show, holiday show. Then tomorrow night on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV, Emmett O'Hanlon is going to be with us. Then on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. <laughs> I remember all these times and time zones. GMT, Ireland, Scotland, England, Switzerland, Portugal. Um, Keith Harkin will be live and direct from uh, Portugal. It's going to be incredible. He's going to perform live. Then Saturday night, more music with jazz vocalist Tammy McCann, live from Chicago. Then on Sunday, Connor McGinty is going to be here as well. Then on Sunday night, we've got extraordinary pianist and composer Jimmy Roberts is going to be with us Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, 4 p.m. Pacific. That's going to be on both YouTube and Facebook. So Jimmy Roberts on Sunday will be on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, Lady Bain tomorrow at 4. Uh, Emmett O'Hanlon tomorrow at 7. YouTube channel, YouTube, Gym Masters TV. Um, and then Keith Harkin on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern and Tammy McCann, YouTube channel. Connor McGinty, 3 p.m. Eastern on uh, Sunday. That'll be on our YouTube channel. And then uh, brilliant award-winning pianist and composer Jimmy Roberts is going to be with us Sunday night. And that's uh, going to be on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Coming up uh, the weekend after Darren Holden from Riverdance and the High Kings is going to be with us as well. And again, uh, that's just to name a few. We have a whole 
bevy of guests. We are now booking February. We're booking February. I'm excited to let you know as well. Nathan Carter, the English country music star. Nathan Carter is going to be joining us. Uh, Anson Williams, who you remember from Happy Days, is going to be with us as well coming up in January. Um, really cool things happening. And we're working so hard here at the Gym Masters Show Live to bring you entertainment, levity, levity, inspiration, knowledge building. This is bringing back the lost art of conversation with uh, style and flair, a little panache here and there, and uh, humor, lots of levity. We thank once again our fantastic guest, our brilliant friend of our show, the one and only Ken Fallon, brilliant illustrator, celebrity characterist, and uh, so much more. And now he's walking Alfie, who was uh, very well mattered this evening. <laughs> if you'd like to see this episode again or any of our episodes, they're all on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. Uh, yes, taking a look at some of these comments coming in here. Let's see if we can scroll back a little bit. Um, there's so many comments that have come in. It's absolutely unbelievable. Whew. Wow. I'm looking at all these. Good night, everyone. Wonderful night. Again, my pleasure, my pleasure. And uh, let's see, where do we leave off? I mean, there's tons of them, hundreds of them here. Uh, Ann Wozniak says... Thank you for this wonderful evening. We'll be watching for the book. Yes. Uh, hopefully, we'll keep you posted on that as well. What a most amazing evening. Thank you, Ken Wah. We saw that absolutely perfect. And um, thank you, Bobby. Bobby was with us last night. If you didn't see that episode, you can see it on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. Just inspiring. Thank you, Bobby. Um, Linda O'Dell in beautiful St. Augustine, Florida. Hope you and your family have a very Merry Christmas. You as well, Linda. Juanita in South Africa. She's a real trooper. It's late night in South Africa. Great conversation. Love your work. Ken, stay safe. Yep, he got to see that as well. And um, Steve Martin, wonderful show. Steve, thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure having you here. One of Michael's uh, dreams is for him to do another illustration of a Colby musical someday. Yeah, maybe I should have him do the Lovity uh, logo or something, right? Wouldn't there be several people have offered to do that and even write a theme song and jingle and everything? We gotta, we're got we working on all that. Um, probably, you know, after the holidays, we'll have some really new cool things we're going to be rolling out here on the show. That's right. No, we have no problem. Uh, I used to do radio shows. Well, I'm still on the air on the radio, but I did a show on iHeartRadio for 18 years where I was on for five hours live straight uh, on Saturdays and Sundays live weekend show for 18 years. And uh, I was the single host and, you know, meaning the only one hosting. And the only thing that was uh, in between was uh, the commercial breaks and the top of the hour news break and weather. So we can definitely fill in. <laughs> and uh, my work on television, too, there's been many times where I, I've had to ad lib and fill in the blanks. Uh, I love doing that because it keeps all my cylinders firing and it's the adrenaline, especially when it's live. I love live television, live radio, live on location events and shoots, live stage. Thank you so much for coming to Liberty Hall tonight, Ken. Yep. Uh, I absolutely enjoy the beautiful work. Thank you, Sherry. Great, great evening, Jim. Thank you, Marsha, as well. You have a good night. Jill says, uh, thank you, Jim, for another amazing show. My pleasure. This weekend has such a fantastic lineup, Jim. Looking forward to all these upcoming shows. Again, we're back tomorrow, 4 p.m. Special time, 4 p.m. Lady Bane, R&B sensation. Has, we've got a great show in store. She's all excited. Another amazing show, Jim. Thank you for having Ken as a guest. What an unbelievable talent. My pleasure. And that's the thing about our show. I like variety. Um, this is like a entertainment lifestyle television talk show that you may remember where they would have a variety of guests, a variety of topics, lots of viewer uh, interaction, lots of good feelings and vibes uh, mixed in with the modern vibe and sensibility of whatever is going on today. We talk about today. We celebrate today. We celebrate yesterday. We look forward to tomorrow together. That's a true talk show. A true entertainment lifestyle talk show uh, is really like that. I know this is going to be a whirlwind weekend. By Monday, I'm going to need some sleep. Uh, 
You're spoiling us with such great guests. My pleasure. A lot of work behind the scenes, but we're loving it. That was cool. Great art. Loved it all. Kathleen, I will call you tomorrow. Today got away from me, but look for my contact tomorrow, my friend. Um, looking forward to seeing uh, Lady Bain tomorrow. It's going to be great. Um, how cool was it to uh, have Steve Martin in the hall? He's a lovely now as well. Absolutely. Uh, yes, Emmett O'Hanlon just did a musical in Germany. Keith's traveling in Portugal. Emmett is going to be here live and direct from New York tomorrow. And Keith will be live and direct from Portugal on Saturday. Thank you, Jim, for another great show. Not surprised. You rock. Have a great night. Good night, all. We'll talk tomorrow, Kathleen. Absolutely. Good night, everyone. Wonderful night again. <laughs> you're always giving us your uh, updates and I hope she, uh, hope you're feeling better and you're Zen. Love Lady Bane. Tomorrow night star is great too. I've seen him. Emmett O'Hanlon. Oh yeah. You are a phenomenon. Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate that. You were our wonderful guest last night. We had so much, uh, love and levity with our uh, viewers around the world and with you as well. And, uh, Thank you for spreading the word about our show, Bobby Horowitz. Love you. Thank you, Jim, for uh, continuing these wonderful shows. Your guests are always amazing. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Anne, Christine says, thanks, Jim, for the all the fantastic shows you bring us each day. Lots of lovity and talent in Lovity Hall. Good night, Jim, and lovities. And we are going to be getting this. I know there's a couple of guests, Christine, that you have suggested, and I have them on the... Whew, at my list, I think, of people that were contacting and checking offers were contacting that either want to come on the show or other people are bringing them to the show is probably as long as Santa Claus's list. But we are we're going to be getting to your uh, to the one the two fabulous people that you suggested. One of them is a weatherman, and I love weather. I did weather. Um, Linda Odell, thank you, Mr. Lovity, for all the many guests you have on your show. It's been an interesting experience. I learned so much. My pleasure. Maureen says, Bobby, you were inspiring as well. I really enjoyed last night's conversation. So did I. Wasn't it great? And how's everybody loving our set? We change it up each night. We have our logo behind us, but we also have the Christmas colors trimming the logo. We've got that family heirloom there, the Santa Claus. That's a family heirloom there. I don't know I'm blocking it, but there's another family heirloom, which is that Santa Claus there. And uh, other things that are a part of the set. We put the tree. The tree is brand new. There you go. It's a huge tree. I know it doesn't look as big on this screen, but it's a huge tree that happens to just we put it right there. And uh, some other things, poinsettias and, and gifts and all kinds of things different colors. We, you know, love to, uh, you know, lighten things up and brighten things up. And I'm using some of my TV noggin, uh, when we are designing the set, I'm very particular about the look of everything. And cause I want to, you know, I want to prevent, uh, prevent, <laughs> I want to prevent problems. Yes. I want to present as best, uh, a program, a presentation, a production for all of you as we can here, you know, coming from the home studio too. Uh, we're not in a major television studio right now. We're in our home studio, uh, turning it into a television studio. So I hope you enjoy uh, all the little extras and nuances that we're adding to our show as we go along. We're tweaking and fine tuning uh, the set and uh, and everything. And uh, I appreciate all that. Yes, Steve Martin is now a lovity. Absolutely. Hope everyone has a good evening. You too. Good evening. Uh, good night, Jim and everyone. Rest up for the busy, busy next few days. Please stay safe and stay well. You too. Maureen, another fantastic evening. Sweet dreams, loveties. You as well. Keep spreading the word. Tell everybody you know about our series, The Jim Master Show Live. We would love that. More and more. I see new names. I see return. Uh, you guys are the... Um, you are the rock solid salt of the earth, loveities, the ones that are here right now. You're with us like every night. You're posting on the Facebook page. I see all the posts. I try to respond. Um, you guys are, we'll have to rush home tomorrow. So excited to see Lady Bane as soon as I get off from work. Uh, we will keep the porch light on for you. But you folks are really the, the diehard loveities, all of you here. Um, 
and we appreciate that. And uh, Juanita, good night to you as well. Thank you uh, for another great show. Good night, everyone. You too, Juanita. And Kathleen, thumbs up. Love your set, beautiful and festival. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Want to come do decorating for me? <laughs> I know, right? Nova Scotia. We'll come to Nova Scotia soon. And uh, Bobby's thanking Maureen for her wonderful comments. Bobby is watching on our YouTube channel. We love that. And I think Bobby subscribed to our YouTube channel too, which we love. So again, if any of you uh, missed any of this, if you came in late, uh, if you would like to see this or any of our shows again, well, all you have to do is uh, go to our YouTube channel and it's all there for you. And you can see all 36, 37 weeks, over 200 episodes of our series here. Boy, my hair is getting long, right? I haven't had it cut since March. It's amazing. It's kind of cool. You know, we'll do it for now. We'll see what 2021 brings. So there you go. Everything is there for you. And uh, a couple more comments coming in before we get ready to wrap things up. And Cassandra Bain, Lady Bain is here. She said, see you all tomorrow. She's getting set. She's probably in rehearsals right now. She's getting her hair done. She's practicing. She's getting all ready to go. I don't doubt it. 4 p.m. Eastern right here on our YouTube channel, 4 p.m. Eastern live. Lady Bain is going to be with us. She's saying, see you all tomorrow already. She, she watches all of our shows live and she binges. And I love that. Karen Campbell Green, you are rock solid. Thank you. I'm rock solid and you guys are salt of the earth. That is a great, great combination. And Lady Bain says, good night, beautiful people. Thank you, Cassandra. You as well. We'll see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern. Well, you and I will chat just before it. We always uh, chat with the guests before the show starts live. Unless it's a guest who doesn't follow the email instructions and they end up sitting on YouTube looking for us or on our Facebook page saying, why, where's the, we've had a couple do that or, or they're, they went over to zoom or something and we're not, we don't use zoom. We use a dedicated streaming service and they're over there and they're looking at the screen saying, I, and then they'll text me before the show. And they're like, I'm over here. I'm, I'm looking at the YouTube page and I don't see you. Uh, what do we do? Like we sent an email a week ago. Did you read it? <laughs> it's in, we put the font, we make the font huge. It almost blinks because we want to make sure everybody is, you know, smooth and they have a smooth transaction. <laughs> but life gets busy. Life gets busy. Bobby Horowitz subscribed. We love you, Bobby Horowitz. Uh, Christine says, thanks, Jim, referring to the guest suggestions. Such a beautiful, welcoming, festive set. Marathon weekend starting tomorrow. Absolutely. And I should say before we head out here that um, if you do have suggestions for um, guests, again, we are just about completely booked for January. Uh, could you imagine that? And we're still in December, but we're just about completely booked for January. We're now, there might be one or two dates available. Uh, we just booked about seven more people between today and yesterday that want to come on that have been brought to us some i've asked and then others as a troop of people around and dear friends and others that uh, and, and we've had um, pr agencies contact us and uh agents and managers of people contact us they're watching the show they're watching the series on youtube and uh i guess they're loving it and they're like i want i want my person to come on and i want uh, my and there's some really amazing people coming on uh, and have been on or are on and are coming on. But if you have a suggestion, there is our uh, email. We try to get to everybody as quickly as we can. It might take a little time only because we're producing all the shows and building all the shows. And like tonight, this a show like this takes a lot of time because there's all the, the videos and all the uh, visuals and that can take a day just putting one show together because as opposed to me just talking directly to the camera or just you know playing a guitar or just chatting there's a lot of production elements to our show and since we do it live and we don't you know some people do one show a month or one show a week or whatever and um 
they'll edit it. They'll take time to edit it. And then when they're done editing it, they'll upload it or they'll share it. We do our shows live like a television show. So we have to make sure by the time that show is ready to go, we have everything we need, all the, any visuals, any videos, um, material, bios, all kinds of stuff is ready to go because psh, 7 p.m. Eastern, we are live. So there's all of this uh, got to be ahead, got to be ahead uh, to work on the upcoming shows. Like tomorrow we have two shows, Saturday we have two shows, Sunday we have two shows. So a lot of uh, work in advance. So when those shows air, everything is in place so we can share it with you. So it's a little bit different when you do the shows live and you do them where we're not just doing one theme, one topic, and I'm not just performing one thing or just saying one thing where it's such a variety and there's so many elements to it. Uh, there's, there's a lot involved to pull it all off. And sometimes the Wi-Fi can go crazy or guests can disappear. Or sometimes you just see a chair when they have to scoot out or things happen or a video plays and it stops in the middle and we reboot. That's, that's, Hey, that happens on network television. Uh, it's all in how you roll with it. So, uh, so with a show like this, with the length of these shows and all these elements, it's quite an undertaking, but, but, but we're loving it. And, uh, you know, keep subscribing to that YouTube channel. We're building that. Uh, there's a certain milestone we're very close to hitting with that YouTube channel. And when we hit it, it's going to be very, very beneficial for the show. And we're excited about that. We're like, like 30 people away from a big milestone. So it's really cool. Uh, so spread the word. We would love that. And that will take the show to other levels. There's also uh, other things that we have in mind for this show, even beyond what we've got here. So I'll keep you posted and all that. Uh, keep the hair. I will. God willing. <laughs> I'm going to watch a lot of the concerts online. Fantastic. Terrific. Be with us too. Be with us too, Soraya. We are here. You sent your suggestions. Perfect. Excellent. Anybody who's already sent suggestions, um, we will, uh, you know, if you've sent suggestions already, we're working on all of it. Um, you sent me a picture of your splinter. You sent me a picture of your splinter, the splinter that you got. Boy, that's uh, that's real levity, huh? Well, hopefully the splinter is gone. No, you know, it's kind of interesting. The hair isn't tucked into the, uh, it's the way it's sitting. It just sort of sat well tonight. It's, it's, uh, you know what it is? It's because of the image of me, Mr. Jim Masters with the short hair there and the logo. Uh, it's sitting straight down. Let's see it there. If I turn. There, now you can see it. You see it now? There it is. There it is. The hat sort of keeps it in check too, and the headphones keep it in check. But sometimes, you know, I like to take the hat off as well. Depends on the topic. It depends on what we're doing uh, as well. Um, well, better late than never, Soraya. It's always wonderful when you are here. Linda says, I always watch your shows when I miss a show. So you watch on line as well on our YouTube channel. That is fantastic. And let's see what else before we wrap up here. Uh, you want to have Sean Cassidy on the show, huh? I know Dwight who watches our show. Dwight gave us a lot of great suggestions as well. Uh, you would like Scott Schwartz back, huh? I don't know. In that six hour show that we did, I think we covered everything, but uh, we're supposed to get together. I think when he comes East again, he wants to go to white castle when you're allowed to do that. And, uh, Johnny Reed, haha, you're so funny. Love you, buddy. Love you too. Karen in Nova Scotia. All right, gang. Uh, the usual, don't forget to relax, love one another, take care of one another, love yourself. Happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah to all celebrating Hanukkah, beginning of Hanukkah, a blessed and uh, peaceful and joyous Hanukkah for all of our uh, Jewish friends and colleagues and fans, viewers, listeners who celebrate Hanukkah. I have many dear uh, Jewish friends uh, and colleagues who celebrate Hanukkah. So we 
send you all the blessing and we toast you as well. And of course, Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy Kwanzaa and everything and anything else. And just happy holiday season. Merry and a happy to one and all. Beautiful time of the year. Very different this year than it has been, but we're all together. One year ago, we weren't all together in our wonderful uh, community of levity here. So if there's anything, and there are a few things that are good about 2020, a few things, we're all here, that's a blessing. But one of the beautiful things is we're all here together. That's a cool thing. So nice to have all of you here. And as Santa Claus, when I was playing Santa Claus, one of my favorite roles to play, I wish you all the best of the holidays. Oh, one other. Sir James Galway is coming on December 18th. That is next. Yeah, it's next Friday already. Next Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. This is very big. Extraordinary music legend Sir James Galway is going to be here with his lovely wife, Lady Jean Galway. Internationally known Irish flautist. 30 million albums sold. Uh, Sir James Galway, he is extraordinary. Uh, Lady Jean and I are putting together a wonderful holiday show and birthday celebration celebrating Sir James. And uh, it's going to be great. She is a brilliant flautist as well. That is uh, Friday, December 18th, live at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific, 8 p.m. in Ireland, England, Scotland, Switzerland. They live in Switzerland. Um, he's from Ireland. She's from New York. They live in Switzerland. Uh, I met them when I was emceeing at Carnegie Hall. Uh, it was a wonderful celebration of Sir, uh, Sir James Galway. And they're beautiful people and so talented. And they're going to be here a week from tomorrow. That's amazing. That's a blessing. I cannot wait. That's going to be really incredible. Our beautiful, lovely family hearts. We are now a community that's a blessing and uh, got mine in Newport, Rhode Island, a little shop when we were on a family vacation in Newport, Rhode Island. You always watch back if you miss uh, any of the shows. So that's beautiful. Gang, this is your host, Jim Masters, uh, thanking you for your time this time till next time. And um, boy, we have some epic shows here. This is three hours and 12 minutes. Whew. I'm going to stretch my legs and have a little dessert. We have peanut butter, fresh baked peanut butter cookies with the peanut butter chips. They're the uh, dark, like dark chocolate cookie with the peanut butter chips in it. Oh, I don't, uh, mm -hmm. forget I even said that. If I get you guys on food and cookies, we'll be here for another couple of hours <laughs> and I won't have my cookie. I think tonight I've earned my cookies. Uh, don't forget to smile. We always say that. Don't forget to share the lovity. Yes, that's me with the shorter hair at the ocean. And of course, you know, the ocean is one of my favorite places. One of my Zen places, of course, being with loving family and friends is my ultimate Zen place. The ocean, love it. Loving, uh, living here along the coast in the Northeastern United States. Uh, love it. And uh, music, writing, of course, uh, cycling, tennis, uh, my career working in television and radio and stage uh, and all the different uh, productions and shows I've had an opportunity to be a part of and television stations, radio stations, networks, um, movies, TV shows, what have you, news programs, everything, commercials, love it all, voiceovers. And uh, that's part of my uh, Zen is when I'm doing my fang and of course, it's Zen when we're here with all of you. So we're going to wrap up. Uh-oh, cookies. <laughs> Did we hear food? Tea time before bed, loveties, with some cookies. Food, peanut butter cookies. See, you mentioned pets, children, and cookies. My pleasure. Thank you, Soraya. Uh, thanks, uh, Jim, for doing all these shows for us. I'm glad that I found you online. Well, you know what? You're all beautiful, wonderful people and wonderful souls. And I am so touched to know all of you as we do through the Gym Masters show live. Um, you got it, Karen. We are. And love the Christmas tree. Thank you, Renee. Thank you very much. Uh, you would love this episode if you get a chance to watch it on our uh, YouTube channel. 
uh, the extraordinary work of illustrator and uh, celebrity characterist, uh, the brilliant Ken Fallon. If you missed any of it, Betty Davis and Count Basie and Elizabeth Taylor and Elvis Presley. And I mean, it goes on and on and on. George Gershwin. I won't show them all in case you missed it. Uh, but he, he was really cool tonight. So for the 35th time, we're going to say good night. Farewell for now. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. And uh, your 13 year old made uh, shortbread cookies. Cool stuff. And you got to go sing with your teen in the living room. And Jen is Zen in Allentown, Pennsylvania, is going to get ready to dive around in her living room as she loves our theme to our show, the Gym Master Show Live. Happy holidays, everyone. Busy, busy weekend. Two shows tomorrow, two shows Saturday, two shows Sunday. Whew. We sleep well Sunday night. All for you. We're doing this all for all of you, for your entertainment, your enjoyment, for your inspiration. And I'm having a ball doing it with you. Uh, if you need a recap of anything, our Facebook page has a full listing of all the shows that are coming up this weekend and all the times and locations, YouTube, Facebook, that kind of thing. So if you need a recap, go to our Facebook page, Gym Masters TV. Don't forget to like the Facebook page. Love and subscribe our, to our YouTube channel. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter, all at um, Gym Masters TV. Whew. Cherry pie and ice cream. Very good. I'm going to watch again. Loved it so much. Thank you, Karen in Nova Scotia. Linda O'Donnell says, good night, Mr. Leverty. Good night, Leverty. So I say with that, I bid you farewell for now. Take care. Good night. Best of the holidays. We shall see you tomorrow. You guys have a good night. Here comes the theme song that uh, Jen in Allentown, Pennsylvania loves. She jumps around her living room. Maybe she's doing a couch wiggle tonight. Uh, love you all. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night. We shall see you tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern. And as Renee in Iowa says, good night, all. And as Jennifer Barry says, couch wiggles. It's either bed wiggles, couch wiggles, or uh, kitchen or living room dancing for Jenna Zen. Now she's going to do some couch wiggles. All right, the gym masters, singers, and orchestra, you guys all queued up. Have you been rehearsing? All right, here comes our theme song. We say good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody, for watching and all the lovity. See you tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern. We're here. Good night. Mm -hmm.